This is Patriots linebacker, Super Bowl 49 champ, Darius Fleming, and you're watching Von Allen Sports. Real and honest NFL analysis. Subscribe now. Join the empire. Von Allen Sports, let's go! sports what is up guys how y'all doing all right so something different going going to happen tonight so i have a special guest uh that's going to join me here in just a second uh his name is pat truthner um and we met on his channel in the comment section and decided to have him on and come on and do a debate here also we have bitcoin motorists i think a lot of you guys know him He's going to be moderating, but the thing is, is that if you came here tonight for the quarterback uh, tournament, uh, you know, the dice roll and all that stuff, uh, we're going to do that tomorrow in a special members only live show. And the reason is, is because we've had people joining the membership tonight to all day today. We, we, we advertised it. And when it went out, that advertisement was going all the way through Friday. And so we have more people coming in. It's impossible for me to take in the new, the new people and then add them to the tournament drawing and all those things. It's just the logistics is a nightmare. So I think it's better just to have a separate show. So tonight we do the debate with Pat, talk to him a bit about his channel. And then after that, we talk about, you know, the games coming up tomorrow. And I would also like to talk about the games from yesterday and possibly last Sunday because we didn't have a reaction show. Okay. So... Let's see here. Just going to give you guys just a second to get on a few more people because for some reason when I send the 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 notice when it was scheduled that doesn't seem to go out as well as when you go live and immediately it starts popping up for people. So but in in the meantime I'm going to go back. There is a comment that the Gord King made. That I found this pretty funny actually. He says, I hear the U.S. and uh, the World Cup, of course. I hear the U.S. plays Iran next. I'm just glad we aren't playing Afghanistan. Uh, how embarrassing would it be to be in a game with them for 85 minutes and then pull out at the end? <laughs> that's, that's a burn, dude. That's probably the comment of the year right there. So, Too early. Yeah. We're off to a good start. <laughs> Night the Sinister, he said, too bad it's his Xbox. Well, one of you guys are getting an Xbox. One of y'all. So, and then you're going to have to play Madden with me, right? All right, so, let's see here. What's up, guys? How y'all doing? What's going on? Hello. So, again, Bitcoin, you guys have seen him on here. He's going to be our arbiter. Uh, I I told you guys on the last show, I said, there's someone that me and Milena has in mind, somebody we know would, would be, you know, in, integrity, professional, all these things. That was, that's important to us. And, uh, you know, I told Pat about him and uh, everything seems good. So I think we're happy with him. So, okay. Um, do you, uh, should we get started, uh, Aaron? If you want, I can kind of uh, introduce the ground rules and, and have you guys get started. Do you want to go right into it? Yeah, or yeah. I just want to. I want to give Pat a chance to introduce himself to the audience. Okay. Do, okay. Sure. Do you want? Uh, do you want that to? I, I guess we can make that to be part of the debate. We can do a four-minute introduction uh, for Pat, and then uh, and his his main argument, and four-minute introduction for yourself and, and your main argument. Uh, so, uh, do you guys want to? You guys ready to go? Or yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer when you start speaking, Pat. Go ahead. The floor is yours. So introduce yourself and give us your main argument. Yeah, four minutes. Okay. Uh, I'm Pat. I grew up a football fan, just the um, same as Aaron here. The first game I ever remember seeing is the 1988 NFC Championship where Joe Montana got smashed and broke his back, yada, yada. Um, so I was, I remember I was emotionally vested in the NFL during that game. I cried. I remember Roger Craig fumbling and just, it, it broke my heart and I had no clue about football. I had just been so conditioned to love Jerry Rice and Joe Montana through the, we're going to Disney world and all the Super Bowls they won in the early eighties. Um, and then Barry Sanders 
two years later, went to the NFC Championship with the Detroit Lions. I'm from Michigan. I was hooked. Uh, football was was great through the 90s. I, I remember watching tons of games. And um, fast forward to 2004, I get out of the service uh, after being a fringe fan, not really being into it. And I worked with a bunch of guys that did fantasy football. So I was in multiple leagues. I was a commissioner of a league. I would watch the NFC and the AFC game on, on TV because I had it split back when there was an analog signal so I could watch both games. And then I would shut off the Lions because they would be so bad or they would be blacked out because they wouldn't even be on TV. So I was a mm-hmm. diehard, diehard football fan. And that led up until the Calvin Johnson uh, Megatron no completion catch. And uh, I felt myself being emotionally manipulated in that game because he caught the ball. I was excited. I ran upstairs, hugged my sister, you know, da, da, da. Then I came downstairs and it was overturned and it wasn't a catch. So I felt really uh, emotionally invested and I quit watching after that. And then the Brandon Pettigrew, no pass interference happened in 2014. And then the Mm -hmm. next week, Dallas, the Des Bryant, no catch that happened. Um, So that started to confirm that the referees were, were, uh, doing things like that, and then that led to Cam Newton not jumping on the football in the Super Bowl against the Broncos, which Peyton Manning got put into instead of Brock Osweiler. That showed me that uh, the players were instructed not to do certain things. And, uh, I quit watching after that. NFC Championship happens in 2018. Saints, Rams, the no call, the uh, no pass interference on the uh, the hit, and uh, that was a big controversy. So. I didn't watch for years. And then uh, last year, 2021, I watched week one Lions versus 49ers. And that was the first week that they did uh, real betting in the NFL, like legal betting. And uh, I saw the spread get manipulated by the Lions coming back like 21 points. And I saw a backup tight end on an onside kick not dive for a ball like uh, Cam Newton did in the Super Bowl. And that indicated to me that the third string backup scrub tight ends were told hey you can't catch this and conveniently he didn't catch it twice you can go back and watch the footage it's not on my channel anymore but it's still on the highlight and then conveniently it bounced off george kittle's face like he turned into uh hank basket all of a sudden and he couldn't catch and then the lions rolled down the field scored got the extra point hawkinson's wide open in the end zone uh and so i i wanted to do a few videos on youtube just to show hey if it ever came out that it wasn't legit i did a video six years ago but when i did a video the first video got like fifteen thousand views it like blew up the comments were insane um so i just went from there you know and i really don't like watching the nfl anymore and breaking down the footage and stuff it's it's not uh something i enjoy but i do it because i feel convicted to show evidence to people who are like me that like wasted way too much time on the nfl and stats and fantasy and now the betting is just out of control but that's that's basically where i'm at right now so all right perfect that... sorry where yeah you there? had 10 seconds left so go ahead finish your thought that's it thanks for having okay. me on i appreciate you i like your hustle too i appreciate your channel and stuff i haven't watched much of your stuff but i appreciate how, how you roll you know people all right. people don't realize how hard it is to run an actual youtube channel by the way I, I've noticed that. I'll go ahead and uh, and let you have the floor here, Aaron, and I'll start the timer when you start uh, speaking. Okay. So for me, I'm going to get introduce myself to your fans because I figure you're going to want to upload this on your uh, your channel, right? So um, my name is Aaron Von Allen. This is uh, Von Allen Sports Channel. What we do here is we talk about basically we talk about football, but we correct things that ESPN won't talk about or that they'll sensationalize. We basically do old school football talk, which means we talk about the players. We talk about the plays. We talk about uh, the coaching, the decision-making, all these things. We talk about historic, we have debates on like who's the greatest of all time, all that stuff. But we cut out all the, the, uh, the nonsense and the activism that is now ESPN. When I was a kid, you didn't, you didn't miss Sports Center in the mornings. You didn't. And if you, if you went to school and you didn't see what's, what happened last night on any, any, any game, if you missed Sports Center at like 7 a.m. and you go to school, you were out of the loop and you were considered like, what the hell's wrong with you, right? We missed that. I missed that. And that's what made me want to start this channel is to have that kind of thing back. Not that I'm going to be ESPN or anything, but look, I mean, there's a lot of people who like this stuff. 
Um, as far as my background, um, I've always been a football fan my whole life, you know, like most of you guys. The thing is, is as far as playing, I played all sports all through high school. Um, I had the uh, privilege of getting to kick field goals with the Arizona Cardinals um, for a little bit during their, you know, off-season training camp. And that was a really interesting experience and got to meet a lot of those guys and kick with Neil Rackers, who uh, actually the year before I met him, he had set the record for most field goals in, the, in a season. So that was really interesting. Um, I, I played hockey and all that other, you know, all kinds of different sports. And that's basically my background for that. And I just love, love the game and I've been analyzing it. My, my, I would say my favorite position in the NFL, like is quarterback heavy. That's pretty obvious that I lean towards the quarterback position. And the reason is, is because the quarterback position is so cerebral. It's all about thinking. It's all about, I love chess. I love, I love board games. I love, I love, uh, studying, wars and military and armies and things like that football is all is like that you know it's a but in a, in a in a sport version and i the quarterback is like the general you know on the field so that's that's kind of what i gravitate towards so if you ever if you guys look up my my history on my videos you're going to see a lot of discussions about tom brady and drew Brees and aaron Rodgers and joe montana you're going to see a lot of that stuff and that's just because i have a personal interest in quarterbacking so Okay, you have another 90 seconds or so. Do you want to just say what your basic uh, um, argument is regarding whether the NFL is rigged or not? You have about you know, 70 sure. seconds or so. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so basically it's like this. Nobody on earth can say that anything is 100% legit. Nobody. That's impossible, okay? So if you say the NFL is rigged, okay, to what extent? And if, if your videos, you know, when I saw your videos, and, and there's a lot, of, a lot of channels like this, but... It depends on how it's rigged and what your argument is for the rigging. Um, clearly, an, an NFL team or a, the league itself cannot um, insulate themselves and stop themselves from somebody going rogue. A, a ref or maybe even an owner did something really screwed up and maybe got to a ref or somebody like that. You can't stop that. You, it's impossible, no matter what. If, if, if us three ran a clean league, we can't stop somebody who works for us doing something shady. You just can't. So to say that it's not, there's not been things that's happened, of course there has been. And you could say that about any sport. You could say that about anything. You could say that about elections. You could say that, I mean, there's always, you know, tomfoolery, whatever you want to call it. But as far as um, the method, I think that's what we're debating tonight is the method uh, on how okay. it's rigged. So. All right. Perfect. Uh, perfect summary. Okay. Um, so, um, Again, what we're arguing is, is the NFL rigged? Pat is arguing yes, and Aaron is arguing no. So I, I have a list of questions, and we may actually get to questions from the audience. But I'll start with the first question for Pat. Um, just, uh, you know, and you have 90 seconds to, to respond. Uh, so uh, who do you think is scripting the NFL, and uh, what is their main purpose is, is my first question. Main purpose is, is money. Yeah, uh, and who's scripting it? The entire league, like a total parallel to the WWE, complete, complete mirror, mirror image. So you okay. you sign up, you uh you sign up, you sign an NDA, you can't talk about it. You you probably revetted in college through fraternity or who knows what family connection or whatever, and that's a whole nother spin the the legacies of all these guys and stuff like that. But I just try to focus on the play on the field. But, uh, yeah, they come into the league and, hey, this is what's going on. It's WWE. And the players go, okay, cool. We only have to go 70%. No problem. Sweet. I'm not going to get my femur shattered. Awesome. They still get the money. They get the clout. They just have to whiff a few tackles here and let some slow white guy outrun them. And, hey, they go to the club after the game. It's no problem. So uh, okay. it's top down. It's top down. I'm sure there's some people like the line judge, the guy who holds the sticks. He might not be in the loop, but if they're smart and they listen and they get the jokes, I bet you it's kind of an open secret around uh, all the guys. Unless somebody there is not connected, then it's kind of like, you know. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, Aaron, we'll. I'll give you uh, 60 seconds to uh, um, to respond to that. Let me just make sure I have the... 
<laughs> Sorry, I should have had this uh, figured out. Okay, Aaron. So um, you could, you have a minute to respond to uh, uh, to what Pat just said. Go ahead. Okay. So you're saying it's like the WWE. I don't. That's a big step. WWE is basically a um, prepared play. Like, for example, if you go watch the Phantom of the Opera, um, and then suddenly the Phantom of the Opera, the actors start hitting each other, and they're all athletic and stuff. Well, that would be the, the, that would be the WWE. So by saying that it's like the WWE, you're saying it's a rehearsed play. Is is that what you mean? Yeah. yeah. You liter so you literally believe that all the players are, all this has been predetermined. Like every move, every... No, of, of course not. That would be ludicrous to think that every move, every play, every every single step... But the, the big been... moments, you mean, right? Absolutely. The big moments. Yeah, at that at the level of the NFL, there's no football coaching that needs to be done. They go and they put helmets on and they run around in shorts and they rehearse these plays during the games. And then the game is like the Pro Bowl now where they got tablets on the sidelines. They get a link. Boom, there's the play. OK, we did this all week. I just got to backpedal and turn this way. And oh, oh, I missed the ball. And it's like a 70 yard touchdown and stuff like that. So, yeah, but, but that not, 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 there's no. A lot of the stuff like that is, first of all, comes from a lot of people who didn't play at that level. And even if they didn't, they don't have to. I mean, I never played professional football either. But sure. a lot of this, a lot of this stuff is just, you know, there's no evidence, there's no proof of this. There's a lot of it's not even um, like everything can be explained. Like Super Bowl Fifty One, for example, the Patriots versus Falcons. I've seen tons of videos on Super Bowl Fifty One how the how the Patriots came back. You know, and I look at everything from a uh, logical standpoint, and I try to see if I can find something wrong. I can explain in a football manner every single thing that happened in that comeback, every single thing that went wrong, every single thing that the Falcons did wrong, everything the Patriots did right. Now, that's a very improbable thing to come back from that far. That's why it's never happened, and that's why forever the Super Bowl biggest lead comeback was 10 points until the Patriots broke that in 2014 right so this is something that is a lot of things have to go right like Julian's catch um the sack fumble you know Matt Ryan uh let's see uh Devontae Freeman missing his block see did he are, I'm gonna assume you thought Devontae Freeman probably missed that block on purpose 100 percent yeah probably a big fat timeout before that play and they say hey we got to get a sack here and he chopped and looked the wrong way and some guy came through untouched oh big whiff oh pro pro nfl player. I, I i can tell you i can tell you from playing an experience like that this stuff happens dude it, it happens it happens for real uh you miss blocks i've missed blocks i've missed people I've, I've ran the wrong way i've been i've been juked by a guy that was a fat guy they put like a, a fun offensive lineman you know out on the tight end and he juked me because i went the wrong direction and I was like, what just happened? It was embarrassing. But if I was in the pro sports, people would thought that that's rigged. How can how can Aaron get juked by that guy? It's impossible. But I made okay, the we wrong can, we move. Can, we can get into so. this stuff. I'll, let me um, let me stop you there, Aaron. Um, um, you guys both went way over your time, but uh, I'll, I'll give you a little bit more leeway. If you guys are well, having a back and forth discussion, <laughs> I'll try not to jump in. I'll let you guys I'll let you guys go with the flow. Uh, but I'll ask another question. I'll ask a question to Aaron right now. Um, so, Aaron, you you acknowledge that there's uh, uh, there may be some some plays that uh, uh, that are a little bit uh, head scratching, um, and specifically the Calvin Johnson no catch that uh, that uh, Pat brought up in the beginning. I'm mm -hmm. not even a Lions fan, and that one hurt because I was actually yes. playing in a I was playing in a Survivor League. And a yeah. whole bunch of people the first week had bet against the, the the Lions, and half of the field was about to get wiped out because Detroit won. And then they, when they called that back, I was pissed. I was I was livid. But anyway, let's, this is not about my opinion. This is this is about you, your guys' opinion. But um, so so to what extent, Aaron? Because you you mentioned it earlier that you think that there there are there is some chicanery that might be going on. To what extent do you think uh, there is uh, dishonest stuff going on in the NFL regarding? Um, you know, rigging or, or, or whatever you want to throw in games or whatever you want to call it. So you have okay. 90 seconds. Go ahead. Okay, cool. So first of all, I just want to say the Calvin Johnson, that was a catch. Okay. Still to this day, I have no idea what was going on there. I don't know why they did that, but as far as the betting and things like that, 
there, how many games are there a year, right? And how many playoff games go unnoticed? Like nobody cares. They only notice the one game that where the betting was right and the play went badly or the call went badly. Um, another problem with that is that when you bet, like they say, you know, quote unquote Vegas, which means sports books all around the world is what we're, what we call Vegas, right? They don't care who wins or loses. They don't care about any of that. They just want the balanced money on one side or the other. They want to pay off the winners with the losers money and they want to keep what's called the juice or the, you know, the 10% uh, transaction. So that's where they make their money and they want to balance it. Now, you know, sometimes they get screwed, sometimes they don't, but we're talking about professional handicappers here that have been doing this for a long time. Even I can get pretty close on certain team matchups and things if I really dig into it and I won't be too far off. But when these guys miss, that, that is shown all the time. It's like a Tom Brady inter, uh, interception or, or something. That gets plugged, that gets played on Twitter a million times. Oh, look, or when Tom Brady gets a call or if Aaron Rodgers gets a call, everyone's checking it out and looking at it as if this happens all the time. They go, oh, Tom Brady always gets roughing the passer. Well, if you look it up, he's actually one of the least people that gets roughing the passer. So it's just perception. This is all, a lot of this is perception. Okay, sorry. Okay, uh, go ahead, uh, uh, Pat. Go ahead, you have a minute to respond to that. Yeah, I mean, Tom Brady probably doesn't have a lot of rough in the passers and stuff, but he probably also doesn't have a lot of knockdowns. I mean, that guy's most sack back. quarterback in NFL history. Yeah, how many years has he played? Forty. I mean, he's been it's a lot of sacks. Way, yeah, he definitely has got sacked and stuff for sure. Like, he, it's gonna happen. But um, yeah, I I don't know. You said uh, something that they uh, they pick only the games that vegas swings and stuff like that like you meant like us like people that break down the nfl as being rigged yeah or... and people and people that were betting on it okay so That's incorrect how come That's every a... game well it's I... a game now with the way fan duel is official partner of the nfl the nfl is labeled as sure. sports entertainment. it's not a sports league it's sports entertainment what do you Everything. mean by that it's officially a sports entertainment league like they tried they what, sold, what does that mean sold, a New York Jets guy tried to sue him for a spy gate with the Patriots and Jets when they were filming each other's calls and, and tried to sue the NFL and it got thrown out because the NFL is listed as a sports entertainment thing. Like it's not even a sports league. Like they have the same impunity to do the exact stuff as the WWE. 100%. That's, that, that's not true. Um, there's nowhere where it's written that it was a sports entertainment league. I think what you're referring to is because I'm very, I remember this. You're talking about the Jets fan who sued over Deflategate or Spygate. So sued over Spygate. Uh, it went to court in May of 2010. I'm pretty sure uh, that was thrown out, and it was thrown out because of the argument that the it, all that was, all it was, was that the NFL argued that you just have a right to see the game, and he saw the game. As far as any internal rules, that's within the NFL's job to do. As far as sports entertainment, nobody argued this. That was that guy's lawyer. Uh, that guy's lawyer, which would of course say that, I think his name's Mayor. He, his lawyer said that it was like the WWE. And apparently people have taken this and ran with it and said that the NFL is registered as sports entertainment. That is absolutely not true. You're not gonna find anywhere where it's uh, registered like that. And it would be illegal. It would be a felony. The FBI would, would get, I mean, these guys would be, it would be racketeering cases. There would be all kinds of stuff thrown at them. If, I mean, that's, I don't know why this keeps getting repeated. I've tried to find it over the years. People keep saying this. I, I, I heard mean, Goodell changed it after he became commissioner. So if I'm, if I'm incorrect on that, I'll, I'll look into it more. It, I, it could, I could be incorrect on that actually. Like I just, said. I just want to know where it says that. Cause that would be shocking. That would be that would be insane, actually. And that would that now we're, you know, we're going down a different road. But to my that's, knowledge, that's never. Yeah, I try not to stray that far away because I just go with the play on the field. You said there's no evidence to this stuff. I believe in that kind of same comment of us picking the games about Vegas and there's no evidence. The play, the evidence is on the field. It's the play on the field. One hundred percent. That's about as circ that's about as circumstantial as you can get right there. Just saying the play on the field. I mean, yeah. All right, all right. Let, let me just move, move the conversation forward because I wanted to ask uh, Pat a question similar to what he was just t talking about, the play on the field. So uh, I did watch a couple of your videos um, just to kind of get your perspective. 
And it seemed like um, in a couple of them that I saw that it looked like you were saying that the uh, that the ball was being deflected mid-flight. Um, so is that is that what you're – are you saying that the ball is deflected in mid-flight? And Because uh, it seemed like you were saying that for one of the uh, – there was a pass thrown to the end zone, and you said the ball took way too long to get there, um, and, and yeah. the, the receiver caught it. And there was one which was, which was a field goal kick where you said the ball was turning. So, yeah, can you clarify your position on that? Are you saying the ball is being deflected? And if so, how? Go ahead. Uh, you have 90 seconds, Pat. Go ahead. Thanks. Uh, yeah, no, the um... – the ball is being manipulated uh, during the kicks. The ball, uh, in my opinion, it's being moved somehow. Um, and there's different theories on that and whatnot. But the video where I said the guy, it takes too long for the pass to get there. I, you, can't, I can't, you can't get a copyright claim on your video or it could get turned into a strike. I had 50 videos last year with copyright claims by the NFL. And right after the Super Bowl, three of them got turned into a strike. So they can wipe out a channel with it. So you have to edit the videos every 10 seconds. You have to do something to the video or they'll claim it. And uh, they've been manually claiming the videos I upload that I, I beat the robot and they send a human in to claim 10 second bits on my videos and stuff. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm all over it. I edit it out. It's like I don't have anything copyright claimed. But um, that was just me making the video fun where I edited one video shot of a guy throwing the ball and then I like, made three extra clips of the ball going to the receiver so that was a joke and most of my videos i try to make as fun as possible while showing the evidence of the plays that i think shows you know there's a handful of different plays and drives and stuff that shows it's it's rigged in my opinion so i try to show that and then i entertain myself too because this shit's so boring breaking this down so i try to make jokes and that's why a lot of my videos have kind of a little bit of a loopy spin to it and stuff because i try to make okay. it fun so, you, do, so my, you are saying that you do think that the um that it's manipulated during some of the kicks so the the ball yeah, can be manipulated absolutely. in there okay yeah yeah absolutely but theorizing on what it is it, who knows it, i think it has something to do with the drone camera or something or like a technology that we're not even aware of it used to, we used to think magnets in the goal posts something like that and then everyone's like oh the technology wouldn't work and blah 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 but there's ultimate reception gloves that were created like 10 years ago that you put a device in the ball and there's stuff in the gloves that the ball sticks to the uh gloves there are training technique this is a video on youtube you can check it out it was a patented mm -hmm. thing but uh I, there's no doubt in my mind that some of these kicks that are veering this way or that way and then they hook back in or they hook out or the amount that are hitting the posts nowadays in record numbers we've never seen it and we've never seen kicks go one way and veer back in you might see them slice you might see them hook the wind in buffalo new england has done you know all that stuff but you never see it go right and then hook back in or go from an over end tumble to a okay. spiral or something let's give so, let's give aaron a chance to respond to that. aaron do you have any thoughts on that whether it's possible to manipulate the, the balls in the air for, uh, during a kick or anything like that using any type of drone technology or drone cameras well i have no idea i'm not an expert in military whatever i mean i have no i mean i wouldn't be surprised what they can do you know i think all these reports about aliens and stuff is actually just our technology testing themselves against our other fighter pilots and shit but anyway besides that i can perfectly this is this is right up my alley so the football so when a kick a field goal is kicked what when you see what you think where you're what you're calling a hook right so it goes up to the left and then it goes back to the right that is what we call in kicking or in football a shank, an absolute shank. If you kick the ball wrong, it's going to do that. Also, if you kick the laces and you kick it wrong, it'll do that. The reason you haven't always seen that is because the kicking styles change over time. When I was a little kid um, in the 80s, the kicking style was straight on. So you almost never saw this unless he just completely hit it incorrectly because he'd kick off the front of his foot. Then the soccer style came in and you kick, let's say that this is Let's say that this is uh, the top of my foot here. These are my toes, right? You would kick the ball with the top of your foot like this. It's a very weird motion, actually. It's almost, it's almost sideways to the, to, you know, to the person who doesn't know a lot about it. And when you kick it, it spins the ball different ways. If you kick it good, it should go straight up and down, down the middle. It should be fine. Um, we're talking about indoors, right? Because right. uh, outdoors, we know wind and all these things, right? But if you, when you see the rare case, like the... Uh, the Dawson, uh, the Dawson kick from the 49ers game, 2013 or 2014, something like that. It was a very weird kick, and it went, it went in. It was like a knuckleball. 
Um, in rugby, they call that a banana kick or a banana, you know, a banana kick where it curves like this. It's actually they teach that so you can score a goal by being behind the goal. It's really weird. But I've had a million of these shanks kicking these, these footballs. And if you kick it wrong, it's going to go like that. Also, watching this on TV is very, very deceptive. If you actually measure it, if you, if you actually were sit there and measure every little detail, by the time the ball curves from the left to the middle, it only went one yard. It, to the naked eye, to watch it on TV, it looks like it's gone 10 yards. Like, oh my God, how is that possible? It's actually only gone one yard to the right. Then one yard to the right again, and then maybe two to two and a half yards to the right to finish it. That is just basic physics of a ball with certain velocity and the vector and the, the direction it goes in. Um, that can be explained. Aaron. If you if you played golf, if you've thrown a fastball, if you play tennis with top spin and slicing a ball, it's all the same stuff. Aaron. But for a kicker, you don't Aaron. want it to do that. Aaron, okay, you went sorry. way over your time, so I'm going to give Pat oh. had a chance to respond. Okay. Do you have a, well, is there well, anything get, that Aaron said? Give him like give give him extra time if he wants it. Sure. Sure. No, I mean that's that's all I all I theorize on the kicking and, and stuff like that. So, um, well, do you think there's anything to like the the because like, I heard that um, uh, that that um, punters have started uh, kicking different styles. They're starting to do like knuckleball type of punts instead of doing a a spiral type of punt. Do you mm -hmm. think that any change in kicking style has has anything to do with some of these weirder kicks that we've been seeing? Not not only for field goal kickers, but for for punters as well. Do you think that's a plausible explanation, Pat? No, I think that the the kicking style, like Aaron said, has been the same since like Grammatica came into the league or whatever. It's a couple guys in the eighties, I think, were the ones that started the soccer style or whenever it was, mid eighties. Um, but no, I think the field goals kicks have been all the same. Um, it's just with the way the hips are, it's kinda hard to um really pull it and stuff, you know, so it's kind of the same stroke with the leg each time where a punter he can kinda have it spiral off the top of his foot like a field goal or kind of kick the front of the ball to make it have that backspin and stuff. So punting and field goal kind of is a, a little bit different, even though it's complete, you know, a lot the same. But I don't think the field goal kickers have changed much in the last 20 years, unless I could be wrong. I don't. And yeah, I'm not like... sure. I know that the, the first soccer style kickers came in in the 70s, but, uh, but what Aaron was talking about in the 80s, there may have been uh, both soccer style and traditional kickers. Um, Aaron, just a qu uh, question for you, because uh, Pat said something um, uh, when he was arguing in favor of, of it being rigged. Um, so do, do you think that the NFL has an incentive uh, to rig games? Like if the, if the NFL could, say, theoretically rig the outcome for every game, do you think that they would have an incentive to do so? And uh and uh, you know, just to kind of uh, steel man the other side's argument. So, so basically, the question is: Does the NFL have an incentive to rig games? Do you think, Aaron? No. You you have to you have to weigh the uh, positive and negative. Positive meaning: What do you get out of it? Versus what if you're caught? If you're caught overnight, it's over. It's done. It's 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 gone. Everything is just gone. And Maybe there might be a few people who watch it. Maybe, maybe you get a crowd like the XFL or something like that. I don't know, you know, but if it was found out, but, it, but th that would be the dumbest business practice. If Roger Goodell decided to do that, that would be the most ridiculous thing to ever do to your business when your entire business is sport. And, you know, it's the same thing as a quiz show, for example, you rig that you're going to go to prison. You're and then you're not going to have a show anymore. OK, so when it comes but when it comes to football, there's no reason to rig this. We, we're talking about the greatest, some of the greatest athletes on Earth. There's no reason to rig anything and they don't care who the winner is. And why? Why would they? Why would they care either way? You know, I can name you tons of playoffs like Final Four, uh, Final Four, as far as the AFC, NFC championship. No name quarterbacks, teams that nobody likes and the ratings you know, you know, dip and dive, but they don't do anything to manipulate it. How many Patriots Super Bowls were snooze fest until the third or fourth quarter? You know, it's just, you know, I just, there's no real incentive versus the risk. And that's what you've got to look at. You got to look at risk versus, you know, the getting caught versus what do you get out of it? And money? No, that that's there anyway. I mean, you're going to have that no matter what, as long as it's, even if you had bad product, bad football, we've seen some bad football this year, actually. This year has been one of the weirdest years. Even with bad football, people are still going to watch because they think their team 
you know, they're going for their team. But if they think right. it's fake, right. it's over. It's over. All right. I'm going to give I'm going to give Pat a chance to respond. And Pat, do you sure. think that um, you said the NFL has an incentive to rig games and money is the number one reason? Um, uh, like my my question would be, do you think that, you know, wh- why didn't Mahomes make it to the Super Bowl every year? Because, you know, he's. He's um he's supposedly the 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 one that is the biggest draw or Mahomes or or Brady every year, so um uh, go ahead and respond to what Aaron just said and uh, and and you have a minute. Go ahead. It's uh yeah they have an incentive to to rig it just to make more money and sell more ad space and I didn't I'm sure a fact checker somewhere uh, could check it out but I think the money made by the NFL since Goodell took over in '05 has went up tremendously. And I know the last uh, ad deal that they made this last year or it goes into effect next year or whatever is tremendous. And it's got a bunch of money and his old frat buddy Bezos got Thursday night. And if the NFL can pitch to the TV networks that they are going to have a game that goes down to the wire in the fourth quarter and your ass is going to be stuck in your seat till 1030 at night watching the game because you got money on it, your fantasy team, who, who, everything. It's such an exciting game. You're going to watch more ads and more commercials so they can charge more for that ad space to GMC and GMC will pay more once they see that the games are in fact going into the fourth quarter and they're super exciting and they're super dramatic. And then there's off field drama and da, 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 who. So um they have a lot to to game and with the betting the betting used to be like you had to call a bookie and the guy had a lot of money and a gun and now you can go on your phone and the nerd in the office who never got along with the chats never was a jock he can go i bet two guys new york my team won so now all the nerds all the chicks are betting there's way more money coming in and the real football fans like me have been gone for six years. Like, fuck that. I see what's going on. Or people get upset with the BLM, the uh, virtue signaling they do. So a lot of real fans are already gone. A lot of the people watching the NFL, they don't really know what they're watching They're It's uh, like, a, like a, they could be, yeah. a, it could be watching CGI and they wouldn't even know they're not real people. Right. I, 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 I think um, everyone would uh, fully agree with you on your point that betting Increased betting does increase ratings for the NFL. And I think uh, the NFL, um, while initially not liking betting, has started to realize that. And they've kind of embraced in the last maybe 10 years or so, they've started to embrace uh, sports betting. Um, so my question to you, Pat, regarding that would be, um, if, if there is a script out there, and if someone is, is out there um, knowing ahead of time what's, what's kind of going to happen in the games, couldn't they make a lot of money? And the sports books, there's not just one sports book. There's lots of different sports books and their competitors. You mentioned FanDuel, but there's also BetMGM, there's Caesars, there's DraftKings, there's WinBet. So these aren't all the same company. They are competitors. And um, and they don't all have the same line, as I'm sure you fully know. Uh, they have different lines. Um, and a lot of bettors like myself look at those lines, shop the lines and try to take advantage of discrepancies. So my question to you is, is if it is rigged, couldn't somebody just make a whole bunch of money betting on these and just, just raking it in and, and fleecing all these sports books uh, who are, who are putting every single bet out there and, and they have to take the action that they get. So couldn't someone just take advantage of that and just make a whole bunch of money? And if so, put me in touch with that person. I, I'd love to make that, <laughs> make that money. Go ahead, Pat. You have 90 seconds. Yeah, I want I want in on that line too. I got a couple stacks we can throw on that uh, that bet. But uh, no, uh, that would be if they were two separate entities. But now they're this, they're all the same entity. It's all it's all it's all one big machine. The uh, the TV networks, the the um, the league, and the and the betting and and um, like you said, right now they're just making money off the vig. They're just making money off the cut off all the bets, and everybody's in line that is in the know there's no owner who's going and dropping 10 million dollars on the jaguars that's messing up the line and flips the books and causes this huge controversy because that much money was put on that the jaguars in the second what you know whatever the situation would be so everybody's in line with that and everyone's just kind of bumping elbows going along getting along making their salary doing their job the owners making tons of money off of the revenue they they split it all so just no nobody in that club is going and making those bets and i don't know if the players can go and have their own like their own app to bet and they bet within certain parameters of that i don't know i i would think they would bet and have fun with it but maybe they're totally not 
into the betting and they're just taking it from the public. I mean, I don't know, but the way the spreads have been manipulated the last two years and the in-game betting with uh, uh, the Saints and Buccaneers last year, if you put a hundred on FanDuel and they scored one touchdown, you got a hundred to play with. The score was nine to zero, the Saints versus the Buccaneers. Nobody mm -hmm. scored a touchdown. So there's clearly stuff going on and you see it in the plays with uh, point shavings and uh, people not getting a catch. You know, one more catch, Gronkowski, and you get $150. Mm -hmm. on big special yeah. bet and he drops four passes in a row and ends with one short and all these people who took that bet lose the money sorry i probably went over no no you're fine you're fine um aaron went over a little bit so i'm giving both of you guys a little bit of leeway as long as you're in the flow as long as you're staying on topic i'm letting you go over yeah a little that bit. that's uh, that's cool. what i thought yeah. yeah so yeah so um so aaron uh yeah so i'm just gonna let you respond to what pat just said what do you think about the betting do you think that the increased sports betting and the nfl going from you know, back in the 80s and 90s being against sports betting to now embracing it and being in favor of sports betting. Do you think that that's something that's concerning? And do you think Pat makes a good point there? Um, it's well, it's not a good point as far as saying that the league rigged it. All this all this is, is on, honestly, I have no love for Roger Goodell. OK, but the reason the money came in with Roger Goodell is because for the owners, he's a really good commissioner. I can't stand the guy. OK, I can't stand him. And most fans can't stand him. But when he came in, he tripled down on the fantasy football craze. That right there, single-handedly, just brought in a whole new generation of kids. Whole new generation. That opened up avenues everywhere. That really, really created a ripple. Now, all the betting with the DraftKings and all that stuff, that is just, they've made it legal now to do that. It has nothing to do with them. I mean, well, maybe they lobbied for it. Who knows? I don't know. Because it makes their product even more watched. More people spend money, the more you watch. If you have a starting quarterback in fantasy football, more people watch. These are me business mechanisms. What you're citing is business, good business. You're, you're, all you're citing is what I would do if I owned any business is I would try to exploit it the best I could. But I wouldn't sell you poisoned apples just because I could. You know, I'm still going to sell you a real apple, a clean, clean food and good food. Why would I start like giving you substandard if I'm making a killing? I just found a better way to sell you an apple. Maybe I even said, hey, this apple is uh, uh, the best apple of all time. Maybe I even lie a little bit or, you know, who knows? But it doesn't mean that I rigged the whole thing. It, I, yeah. I just don't see a correlation. I don't see any evidence ever, ever. And point shaving, I've never, not since the 19, what, 70s maybe? Uh, mm -hmm. no, no well, there players. was a point shaving. Uh, there was a point shaving incident in college basketball, and the sports books were the ones that that caught it because they re they realized that there was a weird betting going on. Before well, good for them. Else. They're the ones, good they're the ones who called the feds. The sports books did. Um, yeah. But anyway, um, I, I have one more question. Actually, I had more questions, but it's kind of covering stuff we've already talked about. But I do have one more question that I want to ask both of you. Um, so um, I'll ask I'll ask it to you, Pat, first. Um, basically, the question is. Can the NFL do anything or what can the NFL do uh, to kind of answer some of the critics uh, like yourself that think a lot of it is rigged? Is there anything that the NFL can do to kind of show you that they're more above board or maybe get get a fan like you back watching their games that has kind of um, uh, gotten upset and stopped watching because of some some weird calls and plays? Is there anything the NFL can do to kind of win you back and to kind of assuage your your criticism? Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, they could go one way or the other. Right now, they're in a, a weird halfway point between real football or what we perceive as real football, you and I, you know, the 70s and 80s, the real smash mouth. Any fan can say nowadays football, due to the safety rules and the different play structures that changed, um, it's not your dad's football league anymore. They don't, they're not a smash mouth. That, that's obvious. But uh, the NFL could win me back if they swung back to real football. 21 to 7 was the score. It was a blowout. One team couldn't do shit. They got lucky on a punt return and scored a you know, boring old football like you watch at the high school or peewee level. Um, if they went back to that, I would be interested. Or if they jumped the shark and went full WWE, admitted it, and then when Devontae Adams catches it and goes in the sideline and a guy's in his way, he can give him the stone-cold stutter, throw him in the crowd, smash him on a table, and then run back to the huddle. And you know I'll be watching that shit. And then in between games, you got Mahomes is, sl is sliding in on Aaron Rodgers' chick, 
sneaking out the window and you know they got a whole skit like they think wwe you know i'm sure they've done that you know if aaron Rodgers came home and mahomes is putting on his pants slipping out the window i'm gonna watch them play on sunday because it's ooh, drama but if they stay the way that they are right now no they won't win me back and they are currently in a damage control situation because so many people who are fans of the nfl are doing content that's saying is the nfl rigged why are we hearing about the nfl rigged it's picking up traction and so now you see the safety rules thing coming in starting right. with the two and next year i almost guarantee it i mean the pro bowls flag football already so next yeah. year new safety rules come out can't do this can't do that and it's all going to be to help um a structure around the rig so the players stay insulated and the players never get they've always been good the refs are bad the owners are bad but not the precious players when in fact they are 100 percent pro wrestling right now today but next year it's going to change because the safety rule why are you playing so soft out there mr player well the safety rules tell me i can't hit the quarterback anymore so that's why Josh Allen had four hours in the pocket to throw the, you know, so next year, this content will be null and void. And the NFL, it shows with the uh, injuries that you've seen, the Juju Smith Schuster injury where he got knocked out with the straight arms and stuff. You haven't seen hits like that since Austin Collie 10 years ago, because this, there's been penalties. These players don't make these hits anymore. And you're seeing it this year, all of a sudden, and then crappy calls by the refs with like the Tom Brady um, roughing and stuff like that. So now, the, it's in the conscious of the refs are making bad calls and then they don't know what to do. Is it a, is it roughing? Is it not? And next year, the NFLPA is already talking about it. There's going to be safety rules. I called it as soon as the two, two a hit happened and that's all to cover the rig. Maybe even the uh, BLM stuff was to cover up the rig. Cause that's when I walked right. away. 20 Go ahead, Aaron. You can respond specifically to what uh, Pat just said. And then I'll ask you the same question that I asked Pat, but yeah. Uh, okay. It's, it's, um, just, just, the, the, the biggest problem here is that you've undermined your entire position on all this because you said if they change back to the old way of football, what, do they suddenly become legitimate and saints overnight because they're playing the football you want to see? That doesn't make any sense to me. So it, I honestly, I think where this is coming from is you're a Lions fan, correct? I would say you were probably a Lions fan. Was a Lions fan I'd that say. until yeah. Calvin Johnson. Yeah, there's or, a, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's another guy named Brian Tui who's a disgruntled Green Bay Packers fan who wrote a book and he's going around talking about it everywhere. Every single one of his, everything that he writes is from decades ago. Even he points to the 1930s and 40s. It makes no sense. It's like not connected. It's not it's not relevant to today. Um, but. Again, the rule changes that you're talking about, those suck. None of us like all these rule changes, but it doesn't mean rigging. It means that they are trying to maximize their product. Who is that? The quarterback. And the quarterback is the, also the most vulnerable player on the field. Okay, imagine throwing a pass and your arm is up and your knees are uncovered. You're the only guy on the field who cannot cover up if you see something coming. You know, you're blindsided through here, through the, and that's legal, by the way, but through here, up, up behind the head, that's what these are. That doesn't point to rigging. That doesn't point. That just points to them trying to maintain the good product. And nobody watches when you got crappy backup quarterbacks. Anyway, they don't even like. Well, they do, but they. It's not as exciting. Things like that. This again. This is them altering their product w without crossing that line. There is not a. There's never been a real connection between those two. And it doesn't mean, I'm with you, it doesn't mean that refs can't do things or don't manipulate things or have ever done this. I absolutely believe, look at Tim Donaghy from the NBA uh, when the Lakers versus the Kings. That's the most famous, everybody knows that story. What are you supposed to do about it, you know? <laughs> I mean, you, you can't stop that from happening. Or the, or the asshole ref during the uh, Rams versus Saints, uh, the no-call you mentioned at the beginning of this, Man, there's something wrong with that. Why didn't that guy call that? But that doesn't mean that the NFL wanted it that way or anything like that. I'm well, telling you, Drew Brees well, versus yeah, Tom Brady would have been way better than Jared Goff. Okay? Oh, yeah. Like a thousand times better. Well, uh, Aaron, so kind of a similar question that I just asked Pat. Uh, what is it do you think that the NFL can do uh, to kind of um, – answer some of these complaints because because uh, you know the the, the no catch of, of Calvin Johnson um, I mean that that was just uh, like nobody knew what a catch was the NFL couldn't figure that was out. that what bad is, year what yeah do you think the NFL can do to just kind of answer all these critics uh, people who think it's either rigged or people who think that the 
that the, that the rules are weird and it don't make any sense. Uh, what, what would be your suggestion for the NFL to win back fans like Pat and, and others who have, who have stopped watching? That's easy. Pay the refs a lot. Of, I'm talking a fuckload of money. Okay. A lot of money, first of all. And when they screw up so many times, they get, they get thrown in the hole. Okay. And when the, when they screw up, the NFL comes out and says he screwed up. Maybe even to a certain point where you try to remedy that in some way. And I, I don't know exactly what that would be. Like some people were saying they needed to play an extra quarter of the Ram Saints. I don't know if something like that's possible. But they need to show more consistency when these things happen. And they need to, they, they need to kind of embrace that people make mistakes. And they, they, they seem to want to protect their reps so quickly, you know, and as if they're, you know, it's weird. So that drives suspicion. And I understand that. There's a lot of things that I'm suspicious about in the world in general. Um, but again, that doesn't mean that. That just, you know, there, there's so many different uh, avenues for that. And also the, the um, uh, uh, never mind, I forgot. It was something about Goodell that he mentioned, but I can't. That's remember. fine. Uh, so, Pat, yeah. uh, do you have anything to, to uh, respond to uh, what Aaron just said? Uh, um. Yeah, the uh, the Donaghy thing and stuff that showed that like the refs were in a in a group doing things. He said Dick Bavetta and them they were told mm-hmm. by the league instructed. So um, the uh, wait, the who league, said that? Dick, uh, Donaghy said that like it wasn't just him in bed with the FBI who was manipulating games and betting on games. Dick Bavetta, the head of the NBA, and the refs would meet and say, "Hey, this is going on and stuff." It was a structured thing with the referees where the referees were told to extend series and stuff like that so um i'm sure that's the same with the nfl where like the um brandon predigrew no catch it was way more favorable to have the ice bowl too with Den- uh, dallas versus green bay in 2014 in the divisional round or whatever than detroit versus green bay so like um the refs definitely are are paid by the league you know it's not like a rogue referee out there who somebody got to um if they're instructed to throw games they're being instructed by the same bosses of the players so why wouldn't he also just say okay everybody let's do this to really get the ratings going and stuff and well to be honest i don't know enough about the nba or that situation i only remember i don't watch basketball Uh, i did a little bit when kobe was playing but i'm not a Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, if football is what I know and, you know, these lawsuits and things that football goes into, but, um, yeah, I have, I have a lot of, I'm a Lakers fan, so I have a lot of opinions about that series, but I'm going to keep them to myself. It's not appropriate for me to opine on this discussion, <laughs> but, um, That's true. I so, forgot you are like, yeah, so, yes, I am. Um, I'm a Lakers and a Patriots fan, which is kind of weird, but, uh, so, um, so what, what I want to do now is, um, you guys can either, um, ask each other questions or, or Aaron, if you see any good questions from the chat that you want both of you guys to answer, we can probably do that. And we'll have more of a free flowing thing. I'll, I'll put the timer away and we can just kind of be more free flowing. And then um, I'll, I'll jump in if, if someone is, cool. is uh, kind of uh, doing run on sentences. Um, basically, you know, the, the uh, Pat, the, the entire fan base in America would love to see the Cleveland Browns in the Super Bowl. Okay. I don't know one person who would not want to see that. It would be crazy. Honestly, the Detroit Lions, all year long, and everyone here can attest to this, I have been pulling for the Lions. Like I want, I think Jared Goff got screwed over by the Rams. I think his entire upbringing under Sean McVay was, was bullshit. So I've been pulling for the Lions. Everyone would like to see the Lions do well. How come they don't? They're one of the oldest teams in the NFL. Why didn't Peyton Manning win seven rings? Why give it to Tom Brady, who's just some dude that nobody even cared about uh, from San Mateo, California? I mean, it's just like, why Brady? Why not Peyton, who was considered NFL royalty because of his father? You know, it, it, there's so many of these things going back and forth. Uh, the Patriots in 2001, everybody says, oh, 9-11, you know, that makes no sense to me. New York City is 9-11. New York City, the New York Jets, the New York Giants, you give a Super Bowl to their most hated city, Boston? You're going to give a Super Bowl to Boston while you just got the World Trade Center knocked over? That is not logical. And in fact, if you were going to relate 9-11, let's say, for example, uh, because I saw that mentioned, uh, 9-11, you relate that, it would be the Jets and Giants, and then it would be 
the Washington Redskins, maybe even the Baltimore Ravens because the Pentagon was hit. Uh, and then the Pennsylvania plane that went in down in Pennsylvania, or, you know, we're not going to, by the way, we're not going to argue 9-11. I'm just trying to say if, if not, you know, based on the 9-11 things, Steelers or Eagles. Okay. The Patriots are way down here. And the only reason is because of their mascot, but there's no other connection, but Dallas Cowboys are called America's team, you know? So why not them? Like there's so many things that they could have done. It's, you know, as far as st storyline and what drives ratings, like you were saying earlier, I can take any playoff team every year and I can show you a good storyline. I can pick some, I can find something to, to promote. And that's their job. That's, these people are hired to make these storylines, to find something good in them, to find and hype it. That's, their, that's what they're supposed to do. But you could do this with, man, all day long, I could put storylines together on why this is a good matchup, why this will work, why this is awesome. You know, um, again, the, the, it's the risk. And by the way, way too many people involved to do this. Antonio Brown is my exhibit A, your honor. Okay, Antonio Brown's a complete, absolute nutcase. These football players, a lot of them have CTE, right? They murder their wives. They murder, they commit suicide. Some of them kill their children. Some of them get drunk. Some of them deal drugs. They do all this. They lose their minds. But somehow, they've always been coherent enough to never talk about rigging a game. That makes no sense to me. It, yeah, go ahead, Pat. You can it, respond to what, what Aaron just said, and then you can ask a, your own question uh, to Aaron. Okay. I think the people who have murdered their wives and went nuts and stuff like that, I think that's a very small percentage of the people who have actually been in and out of the league and stuff like that. Like that's well, I was going to an extreme, but yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Just like the old adage of like, oh, all these guys are from the hood. They got nothing to lose. And it's like, no, nah, a lot of these guys come from middle class or above. It's, it's hard to get to the league and be that poor kid anymore that doesn't get any specialized training and stuff like that. And a lot of these guys come from uh, pro families and actors. And you look at a lot of the star quarterbacks and their families, Cooper Cup, Mahomes, uh, all played in the league. Their grandfathers played in the league. It's like, a, of course, a legacy. that's not Where weird. They, these guys would not be the ones in the league and stuff like that. So, um, and then, sorry, just to go back with what you were saying about like, everyone wants to see the Browns win and stuff like nobody cares about stuff unless you're from that city. So the Browns, yeah, the Cleveland Browns fan want to see it, but nobody else. They're just like, so Detroit. what team, what, what team is the team that everybody wants to see? I mean, which one? It, it changes. It changes. Like everyone always says, well, if it's rigged, why don't the Cowboys win it? Cause they have the biggest fan base, but you just ruined your own argument because they spend all the money on the Cowboys gear. All the like, you look at the crowd, they just all are draped in Cowboys merch. So they sell out the stadium, they sell a ton of merch. They don't have to win the Super Bowl. It's more advantageous for the league to give it, like, get Cincinnati to go to the Super Bowl. So it riles up the Cincinnati fans, gets them spending more money, and then pays off the stadium that LA just got moved into and built. And now all the LA fans are going to pour money into the Rams merch, into the seats, and pay back the owner for his half of the stadium, while the city of LA will have to pay taxes for the next 50 years to pay off their $500 million chunk of that giant stadium. So there's different things to get uh, different wins and different teams and a different player like a Mahomes. His, his dad got him into the league. His dad was a, a in the club baseball player. So Mahomes doesn't necessarily have to win it all every time because he's the darling. But as long as he's in the mix, he's in the playoffs, he's in the State Farm commercials, he gets to the Super Bowl, he gets a win. I mean, they have a win, right? They won a couple years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. or they yeah. Okay. So he, he got his ring and not everybody has to be the greatest and everybody kind of just is, can be in the middle and stuff. And Peyton and Eli, they weren't the best quarterbacks and they got a couple rings. They were above average top 25 quarterback, you know, in that argument, whatever. But Brady was handpicked, selected. Brady is not just some Joe Schmo that grew up on Portola Drive and San Mateo. Like they like to spin. Really? Every Every interview you hear that about Tom Brady, that he'll ho hum. He was just this guy who got picked seventh in the depth chart for Michigan. What? He wouldn't even have went to Michigan if that was the deal. Hey, Michigan, you yeah, you're seventh on the depth chart. What? That's not a position. Boom, he goes to Berkeley or something like that. And if he was getting recruited by Michigan, every other major school in America would have been recruiting him too. So um, for him to just play this, I'm a ho hum guy, his dad's worth a ton of money. 
his dad is worth like billions. So he's not just what? Hum- he's not just a humble kid from Port oh, Poland. Okay. First yeah, of all, he was the best. Life. He was the best athlete at his high school, and at that time, he was even drafted to the Major League Baseball uh, when he before he even went to college. He was sure, a two sport yeah. athlete. First of all, okay. Sure. It's not that hard to get on the depth chart of a, of a university if you try to get yourself out there. That's that's completely normal. Most college teams have a huge depth chart. It's massive. Okay. Secondly. Tom Brady grew up middle class. His dad had sold insurance. Um, what, what do you mean? His dad is not a billionaire. That that is ridiculous. All all the all the lowest I've seen of his estimated wealth is like a hundred and some million bucks. The lowest. So what? What uh, you mean? That would be look, Tom Brady's money that they're attributing to him. Not not him. His dad is not a rich guy. Not no. Tom Brady's dad did insurance. His first company was New England Financial. How convenient. New England. New England Financial was the first company Tom Brady started. That's his company. That's his dad's company. You mean he started that before Tom Brady was a Patriot? Yeah. Where? Where is this? I've never seen this before. And and look. and these websites that show the net worth stuff, those are fake. Uh, listen, look. my my main career is music. Yeah, they say that I'm worth millions of dollars, dude. Literally. I mean, there's a Wikipedia page on me that says I'm worth millions of dollars. I'm telling you I'm not worth millions of dollars, okay? Why, why would that, but what would money have to do with it, anything? There's a lot of quarterbacks, there's a lot of athletes that have rich parents. That's common. Tennis, almost all tennis players are, are, come from middle class to upper class families because you have to pay for those camps and things like that. But yeah, no doubt Tom Brady grew up probably well, better off than, than we did, I'm assuming. I mean, middle class in San Mateo outside of San Francisco, that's pretty good. That's pretty good upbringing, right? So not middle class I mean, though. It's not in a middle class area. San Mateo is the number two or number one richest country or county in in California. Like he comes from money. The uh, whatever uh, I forget the uh, actual name. Again, there's a difference between that and millions and billions. Like you said, his father is not worth billions. That is not true. That is okay. absolute false. That's if, yeah. you, if you find a concrete uh, amount of his net worth through any type of search, be my guest. And I spent numerous amounts of time um, looking into uh, Tom Brady Sr., Tom Brady, the Drew Bledsoe incident when he was hit by two Jet players and it got taken out with a collapsed lung but came back in and played. I've done a lot of research on it and stuff like that. So um, I could be wrong. He could be worth way less, but just everything that adds up and the fact that they play it off like, oh, he's just this middle class dude. And then you look into his dad and where he grew up, it does not say middle class. He went to one of the richest schools in San Mateo in the area. He went to Michigan. Um, that's a, a big school. Again, there's a, diff- there's a difference between, you know, your family growing up there or being a billionaire. And again, I don't know what, what does the money have to do? Let's say, let's say that Tom Brady senior was a billionaire. Why would that matter to Tom Brady or him being a quarterback? Well, because they play it up that he's just this whole home guy. They make him sound like he's just this regular Joe when really they should be like you. Well, you they also of- said Peyton Manning is a uh, stand up guy, but he showed his testicles to a girl in college. That I mean, that what does that right. have to do with anything? Let's, 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 uh, let me let me jump in here for a second because uh, you guys are kind of going a little bit on a tangents here. But uh, uh, Pat, there was one thing that I thought of when you were uh, mentioning uh, L.A. winning the Super Bowl. Uh, I heard this conspiracy theory. I'm not saying I agree with it, but I just I, I heard it. So I want to run it by you, see what you think of it. That uh, one of the reasons that uh, the NFL wanted the Rams to win, if, if that is the case, is because their colors are the same as the Ukrainian flag. And they were kind of uh, psyoping uh, to kind of uh, have this whole Ukrainian support thing going. Do you think that there's any legs to that uh, uh, theory? I, I have also heard heard that. And um, I don't buy into every every big theory. And, and now you're kind of spinning off into the symbology stuff. And why, like if they're doing anything on an esoteric level as far as the people who run things. And, and uh, that also comes with... Uh, the uh um sorry the uh with the teams like why the lions don't win because they could have a symbolic um undertone is why they don't win and stuff or whatever but um with the rams and the ukraine thing i I, that definitely could be a possibility i think the warriors also won that year and their colors match 
But as far as sitting here and saying that that's legit and that's something that 100% happened, I, I, your guess is as good as mine. I wouldn't doubt it, but who, who really cares about that? Okay. Uh, well, what do you think, Aaron? Do you think symbology is are the are the are the Lions historically bad because um, the NFL doesn't want them to win because they don't like the symbology of the team or something? Do you think there's no? They're historically that? bad because they're ran by shitty owners. Okay, that's why they're historically bad. They hire bad GM, GMs. They hire terrible head coaches. They have tons of talent and they piss it away. That is why they suck. Same thing with the Bears. Listen, if this whole NFL thing was a big conspiracy, like they say back in the gambling days and all that stuff, then how come the Cardinals have never won a Super Bowl? They're, they're the oldest team, actually, them and the Bears. And then you got the, the only one that ever competes is the Packers. What has the Packers got in common? Well, they've had back-to-back Hall of Fame quarterbacks. That certainly helps you. But before Brett Favre, Gre- Gre- Green Bay was garbage. They were hot garbage, complete shit. Absolutely, you know? I'm sure you remember being in Detroit before Brett Favre came along. Packers were an embarrassment. These things coincide with, with, with the quarterbacks. Those things help and decision-making that's Detroit's problem right there. It's ownership. And it, that, that is one of the most important things, you know, I am looking at the chat. There's no, I mean, I, I don't see any super chats in here. It's, I wanted to see if there was any good questions I could throw to you guys, but I, I don't see any super chats and I'm not going <laughs> to read it scrolling. I'm not going to read through everything that's scrolling up, but um, I see a comment yeah. I like, if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead, Aaron. Uh, a gentleman named Johnny G says, thanks to his second daddy, Goodell, of course, Brady was handed all those rings. Again, this is just more making up shit. This is just making up stuff. I, I don't know. What does that mean? His daddy, Goodell. Roger Goodell destroyed Tom Brady's reputation. I mean, completely annihilated him. Uh, yeah, you don't do that. Okay, if 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 they're buddy buddy, okay, um, everyone who's related to Tom Brady will always be thinking, oh, you know, Tom Brady's a cheater. Tom Brady did this. Tom, you know, you don't do that, and you don't allow your brand and your 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 entire life and everything that you are for the rest of your life be labeled as something like that. Because one thing in America, apparently, you can kill people. Apparently, you can rob banks. You can steal from people. You can do all these things. But one thing you can't do is be a cheater and nobody will live that down and you, you just can't live it down for whatever reason. Um, and, and do you think, you think Adele did that cause he had it in for Brady and maybe that's some sort of a soft form of rigging cause they, they didn't like the NFL didn't like the Patriots for some reason. I'm glad you mentioned that there is. Okay. That is a soft rig that that actually is when teams don't like a certain team, when you make up certain things about other people's scandals that don't exist, uh, like Spygate being blown out of proportion, uh, although technically they did violate the rules. So there you go. Getting, you get, should get in trouble. But that was sensationalized to the media, completely dragged the Patriots and Belichick through the mud. Although nearly every team had been doing that up until that point, up until that year before. And when they sent a memo out, so that was kind of weird. But again, they did violate the rules technically. So for a whole half of football, they violated the rules in 2007 of week one. So yeah, okay, give them, give them something. Deflategate is the most... Biggest bullshit that's ever been devised by any commissioner in NFL history, okay? And that right there was people trying to stop the dynasty, all right? They were trying to put a halt to it. That was everybody else. If it was all rigged, nobody would be trying to do these things. And you certainly wouldn't put your prize cow, you wouldn't take your golden calf and sacrifice him to, to everybody. I mean, my mother lives out in the middle of the country in Arkansas, in the middle of nowhere, doesn't even have cable. She just watches from an antenna. She knew about Tom Brady and Deflategate. It was like insane. You don't do that to your prized possession if he's your guy, if he's the person that supposedly has to get seven rings and he's the chosen one. You don't completely destroy his life like that uh, and, go ahead Pat. what do you think yeah. about that do you think no. that the nfl kind of had it in for brady after he was up too much they needed to you know throw him down a peg or something what do you think no about that? not at all i think he just needed to be scuffed up a little bit that's his whole setup he went to michigan as the underdog fought to get the job drew henson this guy whatever came in to give him the quarterback challenge to make it look like brady was getting pushed and all the underdog crap it's all all the controversies with brady it's all to just scuff him up to help build his just a guy like you mystique and tom brady was propped up to be the greatest hands down most rings most stats he just broke a hundred thousand yards 
he's like a hands ahead, a hands down the the go the greatest ever stat wise, and and won't be touched probably in our lifetime if ever for a reason. Everything that's happened to Tom Tom Brady has happened for a reason, and it's to set him up probably after football. And I theorize political stuff because he had that MAGA hat in his locker one time, and he could. Um, there's something after football. They always say, Tom, you're so competitive. What's after football? You've done it all. And he goes, you know, I just don't know. I'll see. And there's always been this tease of what after football. And it's not just another announcer gig. It's something bigger. Tom Brady is the biggest. He's bigger than Manning. He's bigger than everybody for a reason. It's, it's not well, right. what's that reason you're not giving me the reason you're not telling me the reason you said his dad's rich so what a lot of people's dads are got money even if he was a billionaire right the connection exactly. to the nfl i don't understand it he's in that club he's in that what club super, the super elite up the biggest club there is that runs shit the club that pulls all there's the a shit. million athletes that they could use you certainly wouldn't take a guy who cannot run and it's just a, a, a sinking quarterback you wouldn't he would be the, like the worst person you would choose it doesn't make any sense. And again, there's no connection there. There are millions of bridge people in this country that have right. athlete children. By the way, in your own state of Michigan, Drew Henson was the chosen one. He was the chosen one. He was the one. That he's going to be the Yankee or, you know, the, the, the New York. He could go to the Yankees. And actually, he did go to the Yankees. Um, he was the chosen one. And they kept trying to push him on Michigan and yet Tom kept bringing them back in games and they had to eventually give it to Tom, you, you know, because Tom earned it. That's how it works, man. I mean, that, that's how it works in any sport. Uh, it's, it's just nothing you have said is, is, is any evidence. This is just opinion. It's just, right. there's, there's nothing, but I, I just don't understand the connection between being rich and suddenly being the greatest quarterback of all time. I, wouldn't, wouldn't Tom Brady's dad have to be involved, like maybe be an owner of a team or something? Or like, wouldn't there have to be some kind of connection there? Yeah, that's the level he's at. That's the level. What, but at. what's the connection though? What's the what's his connection to the NFL? Being rich, being in that billionaire fucking owner Robert Kraft type of a uh, club. That's what it is. He's uh, he's up there with them, and his kid is in the NFL and he's the greatest of all time. And somebody like uh, uh, other pay players get like role parts, you know, like their dad's in that club too, but their son's not as good. Like Matt Castle, his dad was an actor. Uh, whatever. He, he didn't get the, the breaks. He, he didn't get the wins, but he still played for like 15 years. But Brady is, was gift wrapped a bunch of Super Bowls, a bunch of wins. He's not that good of a quarterback. He gets protected and all this dragging through the mud. You saying, oh, Brady's legacy is just ruined. He's the golden boy. Uh, dude, dude, dude. First of all, don't mimic me when you're Brady. quoting me. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's my own sarcastic voice. It's not. Uh, okay. To do okay. All right. It's my own. Like if you ever watch one of my live streams okay. and stuff, right. the cool. comment, that's how I read it. It is no way. Absolutely not. I'll, I'll try not to do that anymore. Okay. Out of, out of respect to you, but it is no cool. way a personal dig to you. It's just my smart ass voice for somebody. What I, I apologize. Gotcha. I, All right. No problem. Sure. Um, you know, I, I wanted to cap it at an hour. I think we've gone a little bit over that. Do you guys want to just summarize? And uh, I'll give each of you a couple minutes just to summarize your argument. And uh, um, we, we gave you, uh, Pat, the uh, the first word. So I guess we'll give uh, Aaron the last word. So, yeah, just go ahead and summarize what, what, your, what your main point is and, and why you think the NFL is rigged and Aaron, why you think the NFL is not rigged. So just take a couple minutes. I'm not going to time it or anything. Just, just you know, be concise in your, in your statements and kind of uh, summarize your main point. So we can uh, finish it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we didn't really touch a lot on it. We talked about a lot of like the other fringe stuff, but with what I'm I'm into, like I didn't get in my intro. I forgot to say sure. it. Like, I, no, nice. I, Now's your chance. Go ahead. If there's anything specifically yeah. you wanted to cover that we didn't go cover, go ahead. You can do it right now. Okay. Um, like you said, you played football. I didn't play uh, organized football, but I did play like uh, sports my whole life, all into it. And uh, I started getting injured, so when I was like 30. So I started coaching. So I got into coaching and coached all the way to JV. So that's what the red flags were for me because I took clinics and stuff on how to watch tape on how the players play. And I got to see high school players making plays on the field automatically without thinking about it at the high school level. So mm -hmm. at the pro level, the stuff, the mistakes that you're seeing on the field are, are 
they're, they're anomalies. They don't happen. And you see them four or five times in one play, miss tackles, um, offensive plays where the fullback and the tight end go out in the flat. They're completely wide open, not covered. And then they throw it down the field to another guy who's wide open. That doesn't happen on defense, especially with pro players. And then running plays, missed tackles. There's uh, The red flags are on the field with the play on the field, in my opinion. So all the extra stuff that we talked about, that's all really speculative. But watching the play and breaking down the film on the field, um, there's been nobody who debated me and saying, yeah, these, these plays, these players are doing correct things. And that's, or they say, oh, they just made a mistake. And you see five professional athletes make a mistake in the same play that miraculously Matt Ryan runs a 40 yard. There's just the play on the field is a smoking gun. That's period second to nine. And we didn't get really to discuss that, you know, but that's the well, play. We on can, the field. we can. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I, sure. I'm happy to, I, I just, you there's no evidence. The evidence is on the field with how they play football. But that's not Every, evidence either. That that yeah. that's there's no no, no it's not. Okay, so so f first of all, a lot of these, like you said, I know you mocked it, but they are mistakes. They're they're mistakes in coverage, and also these guys are not robots. All right. Uh, again, going back to Super Bowl four, uh, fifty-one. Why did the Falcons? They were gassed, dude. They they the Patriots ran a million plays on them, and they were out there the whole time. They had nothing left in them. Belichick actually prepared the Patriots for cardio. He had them running constantly, all right? Falcons didn't do that. They didn't prepare for it. But these are human beings. And a lot of these things that people point out are, a, a lot of them are actually in the fourth quarter. That's when people make mistakes. That's why there's so much scoring in the fourth quarter. That's why you see two teams that can't really move each other until the dam breaks, right? And in, in, in the fourth quarter, it comes, all comes crashing down because the defense is worn out. Defensive backs, as you know, you're a coach, right? Defensive backs, safeties, they don't get rotated. A, a cornerback will stay on e nearly every down, correct? Wide receivers get rotated, tight ends get rotated. So by the time the fourth, fourth quarter comes around, you're, you're able to take advantage of these guys if they're not. And one mistake, one juke to the left or to the right, one decision this way or that. To be a defensive back, because you... You mentioned a lot about the passing and the wide open guys. That's why I'm focusing on that. The cornerback is the second hardest job on the field. Quarterback is probably the hardest. Cornerback is probably the most physical demanding. And the problem with being one is that you've got to guess where the wide receiver is going. You have to guess correctly and then have time to react to him at the same, at the same moment. That's, dude, that's incredible. Mistakes are going to be made. A lot of mistakes. Let's say you're playing zone defense. Uh, I saw your, actually how I found out about you was your Rams uh, Bucks video from two weeks ago. Someone sent me the link actually. And uh -huh. uh, so I was watching that. Well, the Rams were making mistakes at the very end because Brady, they thought Brady was going to go sideline and they gave him up the middle. So Brady went up the middle. Then they started getting paranoid and they went middle and he goes sidelines. Brady's MO, the one thing he does and why he, he is the greatest of all time is because he takes what the defense gives him and he doesn't panic. That's an attribute that a lot of players don't have. And that is a special skill set to do that. They, because of it, because it was Tom specifically, the defense was second guessing themselves and they were confused. Uh, the Tyler Cup situation where he didn't go for first down and he, he slid down instead, that was a miscommunication between the coach, the head coach, Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford. Matthew did not tell Cup that that was on the next, if they got the first down, not to slide then. Cooper, slid anyway dude these things happen all the time I'm telling you so many things i didn't get the call from my coach or he didn't tell me what's going on and i ran the wrong freaking way and i look like an idiot and then the basketball hits me in the head or the football hits me in the head i can't tell you how many times these things happen or well, i throw a pass Aaron, and my friend gets knocked out you know Aaron, you've mistakes. talked about this before uh, let me just jump in here for a second you've talked sure. about this before on your channel but quick question do you think that uh, what, what Pat is saying about how there there's a lot more of these weird pl plays or mistakes going on recently, do you think that has anything to do with the fact that they're reducing the the uh, the uh, preseason games and and the practicing? Oh yes. the practicing also. Do you think that that might be causing yeah. it and not not so much uh, rigging? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I've I've, I've been bitching about that, uh, Pat. I've been I've been I know you just met me, but I mean all year long I've been complaining about this, and I was complaining about it last year too. The lack of preseason is killing the product, okay? It's killing it. These guys, you know, these guys need, this needs to be 
they need, they need to know who the starters are. They need to know who their guys are. They need to understand the, the, the plays. They need to understand what they're doing. So much is involved in preseason. Preseason is not for the fans. And that's a mistake that Goodell made. It's going to make more money for his owners, but it's going to make it worse for us because we're not going to see good product till like week seven, week eight. It used to be faster than that. Now it's, you know, uh, it's not just a, a lack of preseason though. Guys are all about their brand today. All these athletes, they're always about their Twitter account or something like that. And a lot of them, I see them kind of maybe try to avoid getting hurt sometimes and, and, and things like that, you know? And they make what's called a business decision. And, you know, I remember, I remember back when I was young, some guys would call that a business decision. Like, yeah, man, you were just trying to make sure you get your scholarship. You didn't want to jump on that fumble, for example. Okay. Now that sucks. That's, that's, that's a form of, I guess, what you would, wouldn't want to call not trying or something. Uh, but that does not mean that the entire league is actually scripting their, their games. That would be, that would be insane. And, um, impossible uh, by the way and pat you said something very very interesting earlier on which i which i thought was uh, kind of something i hadn't thought of uh but but a lot of people complain about um the, the the changes in rules and how um it's making the league you know less fun because they're not you're not getting the hard hits and you're getting pe- uh, defense hesitating um and you think this is leading us towards uh, like a, like a wwe style of of, of game uh do you foresee um uh, an NFL, let's say 20, 50, 100 years down the line, which is, I know you think it, it's fake right now, but let's just say it's 100% fake and the NFL doesn't even try to hide it. They, they deliberately are doing it just for entertainment purposes only, and they're not even actually trying to win the games. Um, although in that future, I don't think you would actually be allowed to bet on NFL, just like you can't bet on WWE right now in most sports books. But yeah, do, do, do you think that that's where they were headed? It's not so much just about going to flag football, but it's just going to just a complete entertainment spe- spectacle and people just show up just to watch a spectacle. Yeah, go ahead. Totally, totally, man. I, I was picturing when you were explaining, I was picturing robots playing or CGI players that like the graphics are so good. The whole populace is like, he's my favorite. And it's not even a human. The whole guy is, has been fake the whole time from college, everything, you know, and, and deep fakes. Who knows? I mean, you're talking 50 years. So way down the road, there could be all types of uh, sport and stuff like that. But like to get full WWE, they would have to admit that, yeah, hey, guys, we're not really playing out there. And then they do the kayfabe like in wrestling where they mm-hmm. sell it fans that it's real so the fans would go and watch and they would really sell it and the whole game you would think they really hated each other and they could have all the drama added in and it would be very entertaining i would probably watch it because it would be so stupid and just you didn't know what would happen and like if they could punch out a ref and throw a fan out you know they get in a fight with a fan and blah 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 that would be awesome so well that wouldn't be a sport anymore though is that right. a concern that you have, Aaron, for the for the direction the NFL is going? Because I know you're complaining about some of the you complain about the flag football for uh, the Pro Bowl. Do you, are you is that a concern that you have in the far future that the NFL could just go full on entertainment um, and just n- not even uh, try try to be a sport, or or do you think that's not going to happen with football? Oh yeah, yeah. I've, I've, football I've, I've will die before that happens, or or do you think it'll continue as as just entertainment only? No, no, I don't think it'll ever cross into that path, but I, I am concerned about the rules and, and, and how they're, they're not really called a lot of times, and they're a lot of, not very logical from year to year and things that don't make sense. And those things, you know, over time can really hurt the game, you know? I think, I think we were at a good spot probably around 2010, I, 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 because the headhunting era from 2000, 2001, two, three, four, that was brutal. Okay. These guys were just laying people out, launching their body like missiles. And that was kind of a new thing. And it was just, it was really bad. It was really awful. It was worse than the nineties, actually, that whole, that whole beginning of the, the turn of the century. So they changed the rules a little bit. Of course, you know, it, it helped the passing game quite a bit, but then last few years, I'd say probably like 20, 19, 2020, it's become absolutely egregious. And now they've gone too far to the other side and they need to bring it back. They need to pull back. I know they experiment sometimes. I know sometimes they go through phases and they say, okay, let's kind of loosen up here, but let's tighten up there. And it, uh, it also, they're, what they're trying to do is, well, what they've been trying to do, I should say, I'm not going to predict the future here about what they're going to decide. But in the past, 
they tried to make the rules adjust with how fast the players have become or how strong they are or how vicious they are. So a hit, a collision between two players today is worse than a collision from two players between two players in the 1970s, for example. It's just way more massive and way more messed up. They've been trying to time that. I can see that they're trying to time that. And also, the style of quarterback that's popular now is a running quarterback, a mobile quarterback. The problem, and, and, and Pat, when you were talking about how Tom Brady not getting hit, well, he's a pocket passer, right? The pocket is designed to protect the quarterback. That's what it's there for. And the rules say if you stay in the pocket, you should, be, you should have a right to throw the ball. But if you leave the pocket, those rules no longer apply to you, and now you're a runner. Well, a lot of these guys are getting, like Tua. Tua ran back all the way nearly to the 50-yard line because he's running around like an idiot. Had he not stayed, if he stayed in the pocket, he doesn't get knocked out, you know? And, and so they're trying to stop this stuff, and next year they're probably going to clamp down on it too because they, they don't want to see Mahomes and Josh Allen and Tua and guys like that get knocked out all the time. And I'm worried where that's going to go. So I hope that answers your question. But that's my concern right there. But as far as like CGI or, or robots or something, well, that wouldn't be a sport anymore. And we're talking about a video game now. So I don't even know what, how to answer yeah. that one. So, but yeah. All right. I don't, I don't think the safety is going to turn into WWE. The only way it goes WWE is if it gets admitted. If something comes out where they have to admit it. And there's things that have broke the facade. There was um, before the 2018 no-call pass interference between the Rams and the, and the uh, Saints, there was a big year chunk where there were phantom pass interferences. Late in the game, they throw a deep ball pass interference gets called that wasn't a pass interference that was happening quite a bit it was becoming a problem and that championship game broke the facade where the next day it had to be addressed and they came out with like the challenge flag and stuff like that mm -hmm. so um, when when there's things like that that happen that like crack the facade they have to be admitted and that's like what happened with donahue that's why everyone thinks oh the refs can be paid off because of the donahue thing and if he didn't get busted himself that never would have got officially brought up and like if you call a radio guy right now and try to talk about it being scripted or rigged you don't get any air it's it doesn't get talked about at all and i give you props aaron for even having me on because most people just turn away they don't want they don't, you, your radio guy won't even put you on. It's, they won't even talk about it because it doesn't exist. They don't want anyone going, oh, they could script this. Then it all makes sense. And now they're like me and walk away. And then it's like, I'm just, I don't care about the money. The NFL can make all the money it's, it wants, but the emotional attachment that a lot of men have with this sport or this league, their teams, whatever, when they lose, that's, that's what I'm, I'm fighting for. And if they, if men realize that it's, it's scripted or they get a hunch and they go online and see my video and go, wow, that's exactly what I thought. And then they stop watching it and they go learn something and become better men bravo and then if they watch the super bowl they just look at it and walk away and say this is stupid i'm gonna go talk to someone and have a conversation you know like it's just such a suck it's just it's nothing to even to do about the betting it's just i was i wasted all my 20s being sucked into this stuff and then i i saw it for what it was and now i want to be like hey help people along you know but um i forget where i was going <laughs> And, you know, the thing about WWE, though, is the difference with that or, or what they call professional wrestling, right? Um, that's always been a, a put on, really. Uh, it's been a put on for at least the, at least 100 years, probably a little bit longer, probably 120 yeah, years. Yeah, in the late 1800s, it was a circus yeah. act or a fair yeah. when a fair come to town or whatever, and they would create the characters and everything. And it's always been that way. But they're... At some point, they they figured out, I think it was Vince McMahon's dad. I mean, I don't know a lot about him, uh, so I may be wrong about who it exactly is. But one of them fi figured out a way to kind of market it better, and um, and they started lying. And that's that's why they had to, to, to come clean. So wrestling was always a drama. It's always a play. Just like I said, Phantom of the Opera is a play. It's got to be rehearsed. It's got to be... Um, you know, so much that's for a script that never changes. Imagine scripting an NFL game that changes every week that it's just impossible. You know what I mean? Um, and it wouldn't be sport anymore. That's the thing. It wouldn't be. A, it wouldn't be a competitive, you know, game. I mean, that, now that would mean all sports are rigged. Then if the NFL is rigged, all sports are rigged. Um, 
the Olympics are rigged. I mean, I don't know. So whatever, it, then there's no point in doing any of it. And again, the burden of proof is on you and people who believe like you because you're trying to prove something that there's no proof. There's no evidence. There's no nothing that's ever been shown. And so it's much harder for you. You know, I agree. It's much more difficult for you to have to do that. Um, but I'll... I, again, we agree on bad calls. We agree on refs could do rogue things. Even an owner could do something shady. I absolutely believe that's possible. Humans are humans. They're going to find ways. They're going to find something to get out of it. But to think that the whole thing is just some big, the whole sport is a big circus, I would need to really see the, the proof. And those plays that you say are obvious, I can give you a football reason for why that happened almost always. And if I can't give you a football reason, it's usually a guy who's tired, who's not thinking, who doesn't care anymore. A lot of these players, they don't give a crap in a blowout. They don't care. Sometimes they don't care at all. Maybe they're mad at their coach. Asante Samuel used to do this all the time. He used to, to get back at Bill Belichick. He wouldn't even try on a play. That doesn't mean, so you could have shown Asante Samuel's video and say, look, he's, it's rigged because he wasn't covering his guy. Well, actually, it was a big F you to Bill Belichick. It, it was a personal thing going on there, but it would look like it was rigged. You know, there's all, so many elements to this. So I would have to really see like hardcore, you know, like you said, someone coming out and admitting it and, oh my God, it would be World War III. I think there'd be a, a civil war if that happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you guys want to, if there's other stuff that you want to talk about, I think we pretty much covered everything. Um, we can end it right here. Or if there's, if there's a specific topic that we didn't cover that we, uh, we should get into, um, I'm open to, to hearing that, or we can just uh, end it here. What do you guys want to do? I'm good to keep going. I don't care. I still have stuff to talk about. It's, it's, it's yeah. your call. You have, you have stuff that you want to, okay. What do you want to do, Aaron? Is, is, is there any, uh, um... yeah, let's go, let's go for 10 more minutes. Cause I still have to, uh, talk about, uh, Sunday's games. I still have to cover that. So, um, sure. about 10 more, 10 more minutes. Is that, yeah, go ahead. Pat. Uh, bring how about, up some how, of the about stuff how about at, um, seven o'clock we stop. Okay. Does that sound good? Seven, seven Pacific. 10, I'm sorry. 10, seven Pacific. Yeah. Yeah, oh, got it. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Pat. Um, uh, well, uh, I, I don't have anything like specific. I just wanted to sure. rebuttal and stuff like that. And, and yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, go for it. But it just uh, to say that, like, yeah, it's it's my opinion, and that that's where the line gets drawn. You either admit right, it or right. You, and even back in the day, um, and I wasn't aware. I was too young, but I know a couple guys uh, that were older than me. They knew Jordan got calls by the refs. Um, he got soft calls and a lot of fouls called to make Jordan better back in yeah. back in late 80s 90s and stuff so um mm -hmm. that was still kind of like a conspiracy until the donahue thing came in and then um that that showed that the refs were like uh consolidated uh, a consolidated entity and it, they're not rogue there's no rogue ref who's do doing this or some rogue owner or some rogue player who just quits on a coach they get fired like asante samuel if he was like fuck you better check i ain't doing this yeah. you're done you're fired like you don't he did he got sent to the eagles well, well, every single game that happens. So every game you see yeah. a guy who just doesn't care, who's tired. Well, they're pros. Like you get, you're the best. Like you can't, you can't do that. So to say that like these players are are rogue and Antonio Brown is is still in the league, but he's so crazy and all, and he still got a job in the league. He's a character. He's playing a role, just like Rogers, just like Brady. They're all they all have their roles and. Um, it's just I, I find it laughable that people can't see the play on the field and how these players are just, oh, shucks, they're taking a wrong angle. Even if you're tired, there's parameters of football that the tired player can get to the running back. Cooper Cup's going down the sideline. The defensive back takes an angle to take him out. He doesn't even have to tackle him. He just pushes him out of bounds. And you see these tired um, defensive backs that don't care, I guess taking bad angles as well where they're running right towards where they should be and they curve and then follow and cooper cup runs down the, it's like it's so obvious and, and the pocket being they, they can stand in the pocket for 10 seconds and then they throw it to a guy who's wide open like where, where's the defense it's just it's so obvious and that has nothing to do with the drama the storylines why craft got all those super bowls um you know and who gets paid off where and what owner and what you know it's there's a lot of layers to it. So I try to stick to what I know is, is off and that's the play on the field, every game, every play almost. What would be the point in hiring a coach and then firing him a year or two later and then owing him like $40 million for no reason? What would be the point of that? 
revolving door. That's why the coaching why? tree. Why? They got to blame somebody. They got they, the owner. Blame them for changed. what? It's rigged. For being bad, like the, the character. What do you mean, blame them for what? Like you're talking about within the facade. Why fire a coach within? So the Panthers, for example, just fired Matt Rule, and they're going to owe him a lot of money. Uh, so mm -hmm. they're going to have to pay two coaches. There's been teams that's paid, I think, up to three or four at one time. It was like really weird. What w I'm just saying, like, that would be very bad business to do that unless you're trying to win, if that was your point. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And a while ago when I said talked about how them being healthy or tired at the end of the games or, or taking wrong, those are just examples. So this is a mosaic, okay? There's, it's not just one or the other. It's, it, there's all kinds of different scenarios, and those are just examples of how – a guy could, you know, how that would work out, how if he missed a tackle or missed this or missed that or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, the worst, the worst example of a, of a rogue owner was the Miami um, Dolphins uh, owner in yeah. 2019. I don't remember what week it was. Was it, yeah. I don't know if it was week five or week six. There was some yeah. where the, the coverage on the, on the last play of the game just didn't make any sense. It was like they wanted the opposing team to score. And, it, and that came out. This is the moment that Pat is talking about. That actually yeah. came out. That the coach said yes, the owner told me to deliberately lose the game, and and that's probably the closest we've ever come to, um, and and that owner's in trouble, and and I uh, and the yeah. the uh, the NFL punished that owner, um, suspended him, which is I think was a mistake because I don't think the owner should be suspended because I think that partly led to what the Tua issue, because uh, he wasn't there to kind of be the the adult in the room to say, no, you got to sit too. I don't want to take a chance with, uh, with my investment, but, uh, but yeah, what do you think about a play like that, uh, Aaron, like, uh, where, um, it was kind of an obvious, the coach was telling him to do some coverage that was obviously going to allow a touchdown so they could lose the game uh, as far as the Miami dolphins went. Okay. Well, first, um, not that I would be surprised by that. I watched the Colts tank to get Andrew luck. Okay. So a lot of, a lot of teams, will you know tank or do something but not because there's some conspiracy or, or anything like that but to maybe get a draft pick or something that's why i think the nfl draft should not have or they should have a lottery right to avoid these things or at the end of the the the, the year if you're a bad team you get put in a pot and if you win your games you get rewarded a hype draft pick or something like that so i've always had that opinion with the dolphins i i called it out i said i said they're tanking something's wrong here they're trying to get a pick uh, it, it, it's just something odd. And then that came out and it was like, okay, that's documented on my channel. I've actually said that, that, that they're tanking and they need to check into this. This is something's not right. So I saw those things that that was obvious. Okay. Those things, there was foot, there weren't any football reasons for why these things happen. And that's where you go. And that's where you attack it. You don't attack it when you don't, when you don't see Football, you can't explain it with football reasons. And that's really, I think, where we, we fall off, you know? So I think that's really the line, actually. So it's, it's about, is every play, you know, is, is there all suspect? Or is it just when you can, we can obviously see that you cannot explain it in a football way, you know? And the Dolphins were doing these things and we're suspicious of it. Um, but by the way, the, pro the only problem, again, with the lack of evidence is that, um, the head coach that claimed this did not go to the NFL or did not come out when he was asked this. He finished the season. And that kind of hurts his argument. That hurts his, his situation because if, you're, if, you, if you have such integrity and he's claiming these things and the guy was talking about this and that and being racist or whatever he claimed that the owner was doing, why don't you go to somebody? And it's not about not getting fired because he – he would have won a, a won a lawsuit so big he that money wouldn't that contract wouldn't have made any any difference. But no, he finished out the season and then he didn't say anything until he got fired. That's again. So that comes out as a disgruntled person, a, a person who's pissed off, or a, fan, a NFL fan, for example, who uh, was a longtime NFL fan. His team never won, and then boom, he thinks it's rigged against them or betters and things like that. Same thing. Um, it's, it's hard to kind of remove your personal experience and the decisions you made uh, and then try to change what happened. Let me let Pat chime in. As Pat, do you have a specific opinion on, on the, uh, the 2019 um, uh, Miami Dolphins where it was obvious that at least in a couple of plays that they were uh, blowing coverage? Do you think that this helps your argument or what do you think about specifically about, about that uh, Dolphins team?
I think they it was a scapegoat situation where people are getting hip to seeing the play on the field that it's not legit. So they're scrambling to find scapegoats. So that was just a situation to um, throw the owner under the bus, throw the coach under the bus, and then everyone can say, yeah, I always knew that they tanked. I always knew that they would pay the coach to throw the game. And it's a way to kind of say, yeah, there is the possibility of some rigging with these teams, but it's not the players. It's not. And, and it's all about these players coming untouched so that they can have celebrity status and they're meshing the athlete and the entertainer with like Logan Paul boxing and stuff like that. And all these commercials and Aaron Rodgers all of a sudden is dressing like he's some fashionista type guy. Like they're trying to pack these guys to be to be more uh more, more than just athletes more commercials and stuff like that so uh all that was was just part of the facade that was all acting it wasn't that really didn't happen or that happens with everybody it just got brought out to the light and brought out into the media for uh the part of the facade that wasn't organic and that just happened because he quit like it shows the reason he stayed the whole season is because he's part of the of the gig it's it's all part of the well, are you saying are you saying that it was more obvious because I heard mainstream announcers and mainstream sports talk people calling out that Dolphins team after they after that weird play it wasn't just some weird you know not not to be disrespectful I'm not being disrespectful I think YouTube YouTubers are an important part because because YouTubers talk about stuff that other people won't talk about but it wasn't just some conspiracy theorists these were mainstream um, NFL pundits who were saying that that last play made no sense for, for, for the Dolphins. And do you think that that was just, they screwed up and they just made it too obvious? Is that what you think really happened or, or, or what, what do you think happened there? I'm trying to understand your, your point of view on that. I think it's all obvious and they just highlighted it through the media and the announcers for an agenda. It was all done on purpose. They could have easily not given it any shine and you wouldn't have heard anything about it. And it probably happens all over the place where, like he said, they, the Colts tanked for Andrew Luck, you know, all this types of stuff like that goes down. But this was brought into the light at the time that it was for a reason. It wasn't anything organic. The coach didn't really do it like the whole John Gruden thing. Um, all part of just the NFL drama. None of that's real. Kaepernick, none of it's real. It's all part well, of Well, it would have been more drama if they kept him in, wouldn't it? The fact that they got rid of him just says that they didn't yeah. want the drama. Well, yeah, sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to jump in there. Yeah. If you get fired from the Dolphins, he gets picked up somewhere else as a coach. The, it's a big evolving door. These guys don't – he's not collecting garbage in Reseda right now, uh, you know, unemployment. The, the dude's going to get another cush job in the league. It's, it's a revolving door. Same with the players. Same with the players. Oh, Antonio Brown took his shirt off and freaked out. Next year, he catches a thousand yards. Like, come on, get out of here. Yeah. Well, Aaron Rodgers became enemy number one when he lied about getting vaccinated. Okay. Uh, that very well, same year well, when he yeah. became enemy number one, he won MVP, which is voted on by people. Again, that's another contradiction. It wouldn't make sense. You know, like all, all fake. It, it makes it, sense. It, you could None say that. that about anything, Pat. You could say you could do this all day long. If it went the other way, you would say that. If it went this way, you'd say that. Right. That's where people can't like you. You say you don't see it. I say I see it. But there's no way that if they wanted if he was really that rogue that they're going to put it out. They wouldn't put that out about Aaron Rodgers and him talking about flat earther. And he's anti-vax right in the middle of the big the big controversy about the jab. Come on, please. Mm -hmm. All, I mean, what, what's the, what's the positive though for having your one of your best players and one of your most advertised players? If you notice, Aaron Rodgers is not in State Farm commercials anymore, and he's not getting the gigs he used to because of that. Like it's actually been a problem for him. What's and, his net worth right now? Hundred million. No, yeah. that happened. Yeah. He's doing right. He could go out without another commercial, another win next year. What I'm but saying, but you, earlier you said it was about the money. Like, what what's the incentive? I just don't understand. Like, why would you? become a hated person just just for the hell of it you're already rich he didn't have to do that he could have said no i'm not doing that sorry it's so. the role it's like a wrestler like somebody could have been the uh the the golden boy okay. or whatever yeah you call it. I, I, don't, I don't know yeah. and the yeah, other I, think, I think you guys have both made made your arguments very clear i think you guys have been both concise and and you made your you made your points you made your rebuttals so i, I think i think this was a great discussion and i uh i was really interested to hear what, what you both had to say on this um so yeah, thank you, thank you, Pat, for coming on, and thank you, Aaron, for both being so respectful and for for sticking to the topic and, and making your points. And uh, and I think uh, I think this might be a good place to yeah to end it. Today.
Aaron. Um, but yeah, thank you both. You guys, you guys did awesome. You guys did great. Yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, Pat, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, so, this is right. I'm glad, I'm glad we got to do this. Great time. No, it, it's dude. I, I will invite anybody on who wants to come on and not be like a, um, you know, a dickhead or, you know, like just to come on to, if they're serious and they actually want to have a discussion, I've always been about that. I've always loved that. And we love that here. And we have discussions all the time, you know, but like you said, a lot of people, they, they don't want to do that, but uh, I really appreciate you coming on, man. I really, uh, this has been a lot of fun. So yeah, I agree. Thanks. All right. Thank you. And Bitcoin, thank you so much for doing this. Right. I really appreciate it. All right. You want me to sign off and then you can do the, uh, your, uh, your preview show. Yes. Or... Yes, exactly. I'll, t I'll take care of it though. So it's fine. Okay. All right. Thank you. you. Got it guys. Thanks. Thanks a lot. All right. Let's see. So that was really fun. I really enjoyed that. That was uh, interesting. Um, it was very cool for Pat to come on, and uh, I I think some of his uh, followers came here. So that's uh, that's exactly what we were looking for. We you know looking to share uh, views from different channels and things like that. And that's what me and Pat talked about ahead of time was you know, hopefully this starts trend, this creates things where people do this instead of uh, everybody pissed off all the time at each other and everybody going after each other and um, and just being keyboard cowboys, you know, all the time. That's why when uh, I saw Pat's video for the first time, 
and I, I talked to him. I just wrote a comment. He wrote back. And then instead of arguing the case, I just said, hey, would you like to talk about it? Instead of typing and getting an argument in a comment section between two people that don't haven't even seen each other face to face, or at least you know on camera and haven't talked to each other, and uh, and yeah, he did it. So that's that's perfect. And I really, really think that the moderation thing. I think the the, the moderator there was perfect. Bitcoin Motors did a phenomenal job. I didn't even talk to him I, uh, as far as about this. I did not know anything about what he was doing. I didn't know how he was going to do the questioning and who back and forth. He had some stuff. I was like, what in the world? And um, so professional, so good, so done so well. So Bitcoin, we knew, me and Milena knew you were going to be the right pick for that. And it was absolutely awesome. So, uh, okay. So now... Um, that should prove it's okay to uh, it's it's okay to disagree and uh, talk it out. So you don't have to burn buildings down. You don't have to uh, hurt people in the streets, and you don't have to do all that stuff. Just have a conversation. There you go. So, um, all right. Who's here tonight? Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. If you if you guys sent a, a super chat or something, and we weren't able to pop it up there, but that. Would have wouldn't have worked with you know how this thing was flowing there. So if I missed something there, uh, sorry about that, guys. I mean it did get recorded. It does go to your to your super chat uh, to the uh, the, calc the the calculating of all of them for the season. So that's still there. Just it doesn't. I don't have to actually see it for that to go into the system. So that's all good. Okay. And honestly, I, t I talked to um, I talked to Pat a little bit, just a little, because you know we didn't have much time at the beginning. But I talked to him a little bit. Uh, I honestly think that me and him probably agree on a lot of stuff. Just you know, other things like right. other same things. interest, like uh, you know, military, and I think some some also some social issues and things. I think we're probably on the same page. He's also. Um, uh, faith wise, I think we're on the same page there. So see, yeah. you just got to find out that th these people, especially here, they're going after each other. And it's like, dude, if y'all just talk for a second, you might figure out that you actually have a lot more in common than you do, than you don't. So I hope this leads to more stuff like this because this was so much fun. Oh my God, it was really cool. So it's just hard to find people. It's hard to get people to do it. So, all right. up the games here and but don't think that i'm not going to talk about what happened last night that patriots game that's not that's not sliding here so um i know it already happened and we're going to be talking about sunday but um yeah especially bill belichick what he did just a second here The Chicago Bears take their run show on the... All right. Yeah, don't autoplay on me, buddy. Okay. All right, so morning game, Bills, Lions. We have to ask ourselves this. Are the Lions, are the Lions pretty good? Are they... Okay, let me... Not pretty good. Are the Lions up and coming? Are they something that's building? Do they have anything there? Or... Are the Bills just kind of not trust trustworthy? I, I, I don't know. I mean, again, I was pulling for the, the Lions, of course, in this game because the Bills are in the AFC East, and I thought, okay, you know what? We're, we're probably going to have a hard time beating Minnesota. I know they got crushed by Dallas last week, but NFL is a game of matchups. It's, a, it's, it's all about how you match up with another, another team and what your skill set is for that team, what your style is, right? So we all know that. So you could lose, you know, 30-something to three, and then the next week beat out another team. And then that team you beat could go around and, and go and, and uh, lose to the team you beat the week before. So it's a circle. Tennis is very similar as far as player strength and stuff like that. But I just, I just reserved in my mind, like, okay, there's a chance that Patriots might lose to the Vikings. So Bills, and although I like Josh Allen, 
and all that. I have nothing against the Bills. But I was like, you know, it'd be nice to see the Lions win here. And like I was referring to earlier, uh, I don't think he agreed with me on this, but Cleveland Browns, Lions, I know on this channel, I, 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 can't, I guess I can't speak for everyone, but on this channel, I, I think we all agree it would be very cool to see the Lions or the Browns uh, get somewhere. I mean, aren't we all tired of watching them suck, right? So, and I, the thing about Jared Goff, again, I think he got screwed over by the Rams. I think he got screwed over in, in that deal. So I'd like to see him do pretty well. I honestly believe, okay, so just follow me here. If Jared Goff was given the proper training that he should have been given by Sean McVay when McVay first got there, instead of Sean McVay trying to vicariously work through Jared and be the quarterback on the field, right? Jared could have done what Matthew Stafford did last year. No doubt in my mind. No doubt. They, they you know, I, I think it's a, it's a lateral move if you didn't ruin Jared, had you not ruined Jared. So what he does is he sends Jared away. He brings in Matthew Stafford, who knows how to play the position. And now Sean McVay looks like the genius, when in reality you actually are an idiot because you ruined the other guy. Okay, you ruined the quarterback. When you were supposed to help him. You're supposed to develop him, and you didn't. So when you, when you screwed up on your development, you kick him to the curb, and then you bring in a seasoned quarterback that some other people developed, and, and he pretty much also developed you know, on his own just being in the league for a long time. But again, so with all that, I know I, I bitch about this all the time, but Jared, I like Jared, and I want to see him do well, so I was pulling for them. And it was a, a, a pretty good game, but can you trust the Bills in the playoffs? I don't know. I don't know if I trust the Bills right now. I, I, you know, they, they, they do some really stupid crap. You know, it's a head-scratching stuff. I mean, they can score fast. They can do things like that. And, but they, they make, yeah. They do some things. It, it, it's just, they, I think Josh sometimes has trouble with big moments, like when he fumbled uh, against the Vikings. Again, all he was focused on was moving forward and not pulling back. And I know, I know how this works. I've, I've had things, not exactly the same, but I've, in sports, I've had things like this happen where you're focused on one thing and you don't think about the other. You know, and like Milena uh, said perfectly uh, on last week's show, it's very similar to taking your eyes off the ball and not uh, catching it. And, and, and you're more worried about what's going to happen or what you're going to do with the ball than you are actually getting the ball. And you assume that you're going to get it. Uh, same way a running back will fumble. He'll just think about, oh, it's, it's so natural to just take it on the handoff and you're focused on what's ahead of you, but you actually forget to actually take the ball. Um, so you fumble it. Uh, and same thing with Josh. You know, he, he moved forward before he pulled back out. And these things seem to creep up on Josh quite a bit and a lot more than, than some other quarterbacks. So I don't know if I trust them. Uh, I, I still think the Chiefs are the team to beat in the AFC. So... Um, Giants Cowboys. Okay, it was it was an okay game until the second half, and then it just became like, okay, the Giants just can't compete. Uh, I said the Giants are frauds this year. Um, I mean, it's cool that they're 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 having some good football. I love their head coach. He's you know, I, I like his style, but it's just not enough for the Giants. They're just not a complete team right now. Maybe next year is their time. Uh, but I know they they got off to a good start, but I just don't see them doing anything. I, I think they're pretenders. Uh, Cowboys, really impressed. Shout out to Israel for your Cowboys, man. Uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Uh, like I've told you before, I like Dak Prescott. Um, it's cool to see him win. I also like Mike McCarthy. I know he gets a lot of crap. Uh, too much sometimes. His time ran out in, in Green Bay, and that's just how it works. I mean, sometimes things get stale in a certain place. But I think he gets a lot of crap, and it's kind of a lot of it's undeserved. So... And, and you can't say that it's all him why the Packers failed so much in the playoffs after their Super Bowl win because, well, hello, uh, the Packers haven't had McCarthy in years and they still do their routine choking in the divisional or the championship game. So, all right, so Cowboys, good job, awesome, uh, keep rolling, eight and three. They're the best team in that division. They are Cowboys are better than the Eagles. Yeah, I said it, whatever. I don't care, they're better. Okay, just a second. Uh, Patriots, Vikings. All right. 
this is a great game, and I'm actually really impressed by how the Patriots played. Um, how the, moving the ball the way they did, it just looked like things were clicking very well. And then there was at some point where I thought this is the Patriots could actually could pull this out. But the Vikings, just want to talk about the Vikings for a second. I wrote this on Twitter, and I wrote this in the Legion chat. I'm absolutely, absolutely impressed by the Vikings right now and Kirk Cousins, because Kirk Cousins has taken a lot of crap over the years. Um, even a few years ago, I took a shot at him, said that he can't play in prime, prime time and all this stuff. Well, Kirk is getting it done now. Let's see what happens when they get to the playoffs. But it's very cool to see the Vikings doing good. Again, it's another team that nobody uh, cares about. Apparently, there's no media market money in it or whatever you want to call it. But it's cool to see the Vikings play well, you know, especially all their choking in the 1970s and Fran Tarkin not getting a ring and things like that. But um, Justin Jefferson, holy crap. That catch, by the way, the catch against the Bills two weeks ago, that was inducted into the Hall of Fame. So they took his gloves and his shoes and the I don't, even, I don't know if they took the ball, but they took you know, his stuff. They put it in the Hall of Fame. So this kid has already got uh, his name in there. Uh, better than the OBJ catch. I'm so tired of hearing the OBJ catch. Honestly, OBJ, he was just kind of reaching out for it, trying to get it. But Justin Jefferson, this was him going in the air, taking it from the Bills guy and focused. Like, you, see the, the, you know, he was focused on this. It was fourth down, fourth and long, and that saved the game for them. So the catch had more meaning than the OBJ catch did. Now, OBJ was cool. It was, it was cool looking. I, I, you know, I'll give him that, whatever. But that was made too much of, honestly, I think, in my opinion. But Justin Jefferson, damn, he's good. And I thought the, the Vikings um, screwed themselves over by getting rid of Diggs, but uh, they seem to bounce back from that. So, yeah, uh, Vikings are legit. I, I think they're really good. So... All right, so we have a, let's see here. Sorry I'm talking so fast, guys, but I'm trying to make up for time because uh, we went a little over on the, the debate, so. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm looking for it. Uh, okay, thank you, Melina. Uh, Kevin Godnet, uh, speaking of Vikings, Kevin Godnett, $5 super chat. Let's go. He says, I'm ready to be disappointed by the Vikings again. Skull. Come on, man. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're acting like Israel and the Cowboys. That's how he acts. You know? Don't do that. You got to enjoy the ride, Kevin. Enjoy the ride. Because let, let's say that, let's say the Vikings go on to win the Super Bowl this year. Okay? say that they do you're going to look back on this season and you're going to wish you you know you're going to wish you enjoyed it you're going to wish that every game you 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 had hope and you were you were excited about it you don't want to look back and feel like man i didn't really appreciate it when the vikings beat the patriots and beat bill Bel Bel belichick on national tv on thanksgiving day you don't want to have the attitude where yeah, but, yeah, but we're going to suck in the playoffs. We're going to screw it up, you know? Don't do that. And I, I can tell you as a fan, that's a mistake. And you, you don't, don't do that. So it's the ride. It's all about getting there. Because after they won the Super Bowl, the season's over. It's over. It's done. And that, you know, it allows you to celebrate. But as years go by, you're going to want to be able to go back and watch the regular season games that led up to the Super Bowl, which you will. And you're going to love going through those memories. So uh, enjoy it right now. No, your team right now, I'm saying it right now, is eight, uh, uh, wait, eight, they were eight and two. Now they're nine and two, nine and two. Your Vikings are nine and two, dude. And did anybody think this was going to happen? I thought they were going to be okay, but not like this. Um, and again, the Cowboys loss, that was just a bad matchup for them. You know, ho hopefully they don't have to see Dallas. Okay, maybe they don't. Maybe they can get away around it. But if they do see Dallas, maybe they learn something. In fact, you learn a lot from a loss. You learn a lot more from a loss than you do a win. I'll tell you that much right now. If you look at the Patriots in 2018, when, uh, uh, wait, no, not 2018, um, and not the Patriots. I'm so sorry. Uh, Bucks. So 2020, um, again, conflating Tom Brady and Patriots. See, I, I just, 
it's been three years and I still think he's a Patriot or still see him as a Patriot. Um, 2020, when uh, the Bucks lost to the Chiefs in regular season, and look what happened in the Super Bowl. So they saw their mistakes. They learned from what they were doing and picked it up. So it could be that too, but I think Dallas is stylistically a very bad matchup for Minnesota, and that's all. I don't think it's indicative of your team sucking or being bad or whatever. They, they played great. Dude, Belichick had a great game plan last night, okay? Um, a little iffy on the, the, uh, the Hunter Henry catch in the end zone on the goal line. The problem with that is that I thought the argument was going to be whether or not he got over the line before he got control. I had no idea the argument was going to be it wasn't a catch. Uh, okay, so I, I, until you start seeing the replay and then you notice the ball hits the ground a little bit, okay, you're like, oh, crap. So now it's, it, it, it's called incomplete, which means now they got to kick a field goal because it's fourth down and distant. So that could have gone either way. Who knows what would happen if they had scored, uh, you know, if it, if it had been a complete pass and, and a touchdown or at, at worst maybe put it on the one. But whatever, you know. Um, the Vikings are good. The Vikings are good, man. And, and I, I thought the Patriots played a very good game last night. I mean, I can nitpick everything, okay. There, I can find flaws in every, every single thing. Any game, any, like, they should have done this better. This is the bad call. This is the wrong call. But overall, the Patriots were very, very pleasantly surprising. And Mac was making some great throws, more so than, I mean, he just looked like he was just, it looked like he had been, he's a third, fourth year guy, okay, that kind of just was in the zone. A lot of good stuff there. And it's, that was a solid win for the Vikings, okay? Let's not act like the Patriots suck or anything, okay? They were 6-4 and four going into that game. So... There you go. Congrats, Kevin, but enjoy it, man. Enjoy it. Don't, don't send me another super chat that says you're disappointed. Uh, you're, you're ready to be disappointed. I don't want to hear that, okay? Because there's a lot of teams that's won Super Bowls and has had that history, you know? Um, and they probably thought they were never going to win either, so there you go. At least you've been to them. Imagine... Imagine being a Browns fan or Jaguars or Texans or um, Lions, for example. Never even uh, played in a Super Bowl. That's, that's kind of rough. So, all right. James Johnson. What's up, James? Sharon Tate Lover. That's, that, I like your name there. Um, and Welcome. I know Sharon Tate Lover. I know that 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 was that was hard to see them getting utilization out of a Patriots guy like that. I was like, oh, no, 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 not good. It's it, you know. I thought honestly, when the Patriots had Hawkinson, I thought that he was going to be, um, you know, a, a good Patriot. But whatever, Bill thought no. Speaking of Bill, I just want to say real quick, after the game, when the journalist, journalist. You mean activist? When they asked him about the Hunter Henry catch, he said, did you get an explanation from the refs? Well, he goes, why don't you go and take your guys and go and ask the, the, them, them yourself. Ask them yourself. Isn't that what you do? Isn't, you know, basically saying, isn't that your job? Is it your job to be a journalist, to go investigate, to go, like, find out? Like, go to the source. That was awesome. He put them in their place. And I know that that's not just coming from a football place. That was coming from a, in general, okay, and just overall. James Johnson, Consul James Johnson, sends a $2 super chat. And he says, great job, everyone, for keeping it civil tonight. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Pat seems like a really good dude, you know? Um I mean, a few of his a few of his fans in the chat were kind of dickheads, um, but uh, every every group has that, I guess. Every every channel, but he seemed like a solid guy. Yeah. So. Addy Vasorno sends a two dollar super chat. Addy, speaking of the Browns, Addy, we love you, man. We're all every single year. It's like, see if the Browns can do something here. 
And then I think, okay, you know what? The Browns are going to do something. And then they go and they sign a guy who can't even play in the season. So it's totally Browns. It's absolute Cleveland Browns stuff right there. But um, anyway, so Addie sends a $2 super chat and says, let's go. Hell yeah. But yes, it would be awesome to see uh, you know, that. So it's... Uh, I'd like to see I'd like to see Cleveland get somewhere, you know. Uh when I was a kid, you know, they 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 were pretty damn good. They had Bernie Kosar and um they they got to the AFC Championship game several times. It just didn't work out for them, you know, and of course the fa everyone knows the famous drive that happened. Uh and that that's got to hurt because LA just went on to lose. Okay? So that hurts. It hurts when your team lo loses to a team that goes on and then just gets their ass kicked. You know, it, it's just, that's even worse. If you lose to a team, you want to lose to the eventual Super Bowl champs. At least that's how I feel. If my team loses, then I want to see that team win the Super Bowl because I, you know, you can say, hey, we were good. We just weren't good enough and we lost to the champs. But you lose to a team and they go on and get annihilated. Man, when I was a kid, the Oilers, the Oilers lost to the Buffalo Bills. The Oilers were just, I thought, a better team at the time, playing playing better at that time, at that moment. They lose to the Bills. The Bills go on and just get embarrassed. It's like, uh, come on, man, you know, or, or 20, uh, tell you what, 20, uh, 2013 was like that. So 2013 lose, lose to the Broncos, Peyton Manning's Broncos and the AFC championship game to watch them the next, the two weeks later get destroyed by the Seattle Seahawks and the Legion of Boom made it better the next year when Tom Brady ended up defeating them and the Patriots ended up defeating them. That made it kind of, you know, better there. So. I think I'm caught up here. Oh no, wait. Kevin Godnett sends another $5 super chat. He says, fair enough. The Vikings are the best team in the NFC, except maybe Dallas. They could, uh, they could dismantle fairly secondary uh, rather handedly if we meet up. And I absolutely agree the the, the Eagles, uh, I've seen a lot of areas where they can be exposed by a really good team and a team that, that can just consistently put good drives together. I've seen it all season. It's not me hating on the Eagles. I have no reason to hate the Eagles other than a lot of their fans are dickheads. But uh, again, that has nothing to do with me judging how good a team is or whatever, right? Um, hell, I'm, st I'm still a fan of Nick Foles. And that 2017 Super Bowl pisses me off, I'm telling you, pisses me off. But that's not Nick Foles' fault, right? So it, it has nothing to do with, with me having a problem with Philadelphia. I just don't I, – I see some problems with the Eagles. I absolutely think you're right, Kevin, that the Vikings um, would beat them now. I know they lost to them early in the season, but nobody cares about what happened in week one or week two. It doesn't matter. It's why our, uh, our quarterback formula here, we only look at the last four weeks when it comes to strength of schedule, when it comes to opponent. Don't care if you're playing the best defense from week three and now they're the worst defense or they're on a bad streak or something. I don't care. It, it means nothing to me. What's the, what, what's it matter, right? So. But uh, da Dallas is a team I, I would be, I would be concerned about. Yeah. If, if I was, you know, a Vikings fan. So. Yeah, that's. That's legitimate. But, um, you know, like I said, if you do have to run into them, you use that bad loss uh, at home <laughs> of, all, of all places, which is incredible. You use that and you fix it and you try to, to get better there. So, but maybe they don't even run into Dallas. Who knows? So. Gord King, since $2 Super Chat, Gord King, with the comment of the year, if you missed it at the beginning of the show, you're going to have to rewind it later. Hilarious comment. Gord King says, sent you a special tweet about tonight's debate. All right. Thank you, Gord King. Appreciate it, buddy. Uh, 
Thank you, Gord King. I appreciate it. That's uh, by, by the way, I, I'd say your your complexion is looking very good tonight and almost good enough to eat if I'm if you pardon the expression. So, uh, yeah, I, I really like the 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 color tan you've got. Um, yeah. Have you been working out? You're looking good, dude. Seriously. So. Cool Hand Jared, and I might add Cool Hand Jared is a recent uh, mem uh, joining a recent member uh, to Von Allen Sports, so welcome him to the Empire. Cool Hand Jared says, since the $2 Super Chat, and says, Von Allen Sports is the Stanley Kubrick of sports. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you. That's, uh, that's awesome. Absolutely. Stanley Kubrick is, uh, is one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, so I don't know about that, but... Thank you. I appreciate that. That's that's very cool. Um, by the way, guys, uh, it's um, speaking of the the game. So, like I said, tomorrow is the member. It's a, it's going to be a members uh, event. So we're going to do. Uh, you're going to find out who your quarterback is. We're going to roll the dice and get all the teams together, and everybody's going to be named there, and how that's going to work tonight. If you are not signed up, if you're not subscribed by the time this show is over, if I'm not subscribed, sorry. If you're not a member by the time this show is over, I won't be able to enter you into the tournament because I, tonight I have to work on putting everybody and seating them and then being ready for tomorrow. So if you want to be in the tournament, you have to become a member. It's the only way I can give away an Xbox because it has to be a benefit and not some, you know, whatever. I don't want to deal with the contest and all that stuff that the big companies do. So you have to join. Uh, membership is only $2 a month, okay? So if you're already sending Super Chats, some of you guys are sending way more than that in Super Chats every month. Might as well get a free membership out of it. You know, what, why not, right? So go ahead and sign up for that. I want you in the tournament. I want you to be a part of it because once it gets started, I guarantee you're going to wish you were involved. I promise you. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be so freaking fun, Okay. And based on what tier level you get is uh, how many entries. You can get up to five. So there's five different levels, uh, but you get one entry for each level you're in. So uh, do that tonight if you had ever thought about becoming a member there. So. Let's see here. Yeah, Sharon Tate. Yeah, exactly. See, tw uh, 2015 um, Patriots lost to the, the eventual Denver Broncos, and that's that's like, okay, so you lost to the champions. You lost to Peyton Manning and Vaughn Miller. It's it's not, and Demarcus Ware. It's not a shame. Demarius Thomas, it's not, it's not a shame to lose to these guys and they go on to win, but you lose to them and then they go on and get annihilated. It just, it's just, ugh, it irks me, you know? So... Yeah, Melina, could you um, send them the link to the um, to to join? Or if you don't have it, I can do it. Actually, I'll do it. I got okay. it. I got it. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah, we'll work it out next time. I I didn't send it to you, so it's my fault. I was thinking I was thinking that I had posted it already, so I didn't. Okay, guys, so if you want to join or if you want to update your, your – if you already have a membership, you want to update it, there. It's right there. Uh, I just posted it in the chat, and I'm going to uh, pin it to the top. Okay? So what's up, Jalen? Welcome. So – and again, if you win the Xbox, it's not just winning the Xbox, okay? We're going to play together if you want. Okay? Now, when I say play together, I just mean the Xbox. Okay? I don't mean any other stuff. 
So Gord King, if you're wanting, if you're expecting some kind of like pumpkin thing, some kind of weird melting the pumpkin kind of stuff, um, no. But I'll play, I'll play Madden with you or Halo or something like that. So okay. I think I'm caught up now. All right. Let's see here. So we have Broncos Panthers. You know what? Um, I'm going to quote Brad Gold, a friend of mine. He was here last night for Thanksgiving. And he, he said that Russell Wilson is the GOAT. Um, and he's going to write a book about it and something like that. So, um, Just kidding. Okay. So he was kidding, of course. But it, it, it does bring up, you know, now that we're talking about the Broncos and Panthers, it does bring up a problem. How has a guy fallen so far, so fast? I mean, Russell was up here, like he was thought of every year. And the media, uh, all, even us, everybody thought of Russell so highly, okay? Great player, seemed like he was a good dude, every, all this and now it's just, what, bam, like complete 180 um, moving to Denver. And a lot of it, I, again, I've said this before, it has a lot to do with his marriage. He's become a little Hollywood, you know, a little, you know, not focusing. He used to be this kid who wanted to win Super Bowls and wanted to, you know, it, it was just, you know, rings were something that was on his mind and, and not exactly all the other crap. And then he, at some point he, he changed and became about the contract and I want more money and I'm, I'm the great, I'm the one and all this other stuff. Excuse me. And he, he didn't want to share uh, credit with the Legion of Boom or Marshawn Lynch when there's nothing wrong with that. You're still the quarterback, dude. You're the quarterback. And we all know that that Super Bowl 2013 uh, Super Bowl win was defense heavy. Okay. It doesn't mean that he, Russell Wilson doesn't deserve that. And I put that on his resume. You're the quarterback, dude. You're still the quarterback. It doesn't matter. You still have to make plays. You still have to get things done. And, and the Super Bowl is not just that game. The Super Bowl is a, is a complete, it's a culmination of everything that happened to get there. It's like, it's harder to get to the Super Bowl than it is to win the Super Bowl. So if you win the Super Bowl, and let's say you have an off game. You, you still had to get your team there. So it's not like you didn't help. It's not like, or, you know, it, it's just people take that, they, they look at the one game only and say, oh, well, Russell Wilson didn't contribute in that game as much as everybody else. Well, he was still the quarterback and he was still there. So he's the man in my eyes. He's still awesome. But yet he acted like he couldn't share credit and wanted to be this other person. So he had to get out and he had to show, apparently he had to show everybody that it, it was all him. And he goes to the, one of the worst places ever. And not because Denver is a bad place or not because the Broncos are a bad organization. It just wasn't the right fit for him, in my opinion. It just wasn't the right place. And he just picked incorrectly. And now it's going bad. But the way people are turning against him so fast is shocking. Um, with all that said, Denver's going to win tomorrow. They're going to beat Carolina. So... Ravens, sounds like the cats are getting in a fight. Uh-oh. All right. Tell them to love each other and work it out. Okay. Uh, Ravens, seven and three Ravens. And I'll tell you, I told you guys this two weeks ago when we did the Monday Night Football for the Ravens. They are a better team than their record. In fact, they should be, they should be, uh, you know, at least eight wins, maybe even nine uh, because they let some games go where they had the big lead and they just completely folded at the end. Uh, so look out for the Ravens. The Ravens are a much more dangerous team than I think a lot of people realize. Uh, they're going to win this one. 
Jacksonville. I just, I've lost any confidence that they're going to kind of turn it around here. So, okay. Texans at Dolphins. God, the Texans, man, I swear. Uh, just when you think they can't get any worse and then they, they, they're going to start taking an upward trajectory, they find new ways to, to suck. It, it's, it's, it's quite impressive how they've managed to do this. So let me tell you, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of effort to suck this bad. Like, they just, it's an organizational problem. Again, it, it's, it's one of those situations where they just always make the right decisions. I thought they were going to do something when they, they had uh, Bill O'Brien, and, and, and that started out kind of not, not too bad. You guys remember when the Texans would kind of sneak into the playoffs, awkwardly be pretty good for a little bit? It's like, oh, you know, hey, look at the Texans. They're kind of doing something. Hey, what, you know, and then it just all goes to crap, so... Alrighty. So, yeah, and, and you know, Lovey Smith is the coach of the Texans, of course, and you know, a lot of you guys probably remember him as the coach of the Bears for a very long time. Got the Bears to the Super Bowl in two thousand six season. You have to have a quarterback. You, you've got to, and I know this. We keep saying this over and over again, and it sounds like a broken record, but. It's just, you know, you have to have a quarterback, and it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, uh, if you're not a great coach, like Belichick, for example, and, you know, he's keeping that team alive. You know, I'm not saying Mac Jones sucks or anything. I'm just saying, though, that he doesn't have Tom Brady anymore, but he's still able to keep the team, you know, above water and not drown, completely drown. And But then if you're lesser than Belichick, as far as a coach, and you don't have a quarterback, you're you're done. You're cooked, and that's the Texans' problem right now. So uh, that's too easy. Dolphins, Dolphins for the win. So doesn't need much to be said there. Bears, three and eight Bears versus the six and four Jets. If anybody remembers last week. Milena thought it was a good idea to bring back from New York. So she goes to New York. Okay. If you guys missed the show last week, Milena goes to New York back in March. She was there for a month on business. She was just there for a whole month. Didn't see her. I thought, okay, she's going to bring me cool, something cool back. You know, you may, you know, she went to see where George Washington uh, was sworn in as president. And maybe you could get something from there. You could, you know, maybe get like a cool Empire State Building model or, you know, there's all kinds of cool things that you could do. No, 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 no. Last week, she presents me because it's the first time she'd been on the show. And that week, the Patriots are playing the Jets. So it was Jets week. She presents me with a Jets shirt that she bought uh, in New York. She had hid this from me. I didn't even know it was here all this time since March. Pretty impressive to hide something like that. But after the show, guys, after the show, I found out something else. I didn't even notice it because I was so just shocked that she had pulled this off because I was like, this is a pretty good troll. I mean, th this is an excellent move right here. It's a women's shirt. So she didn't even get me a guy shirt. She got me a woman's shirt. Just to add insult to injury. So not only did she give me a Jets, but a woman's Jets. Dish rag. Dish rag. Horse blanket. Whatever you want to call it. Whatever, man. So I made a bet. I said, if the Jets win the AFC East, I will wear this thing. Now, I made that bet when I thought it was a guy's shirt. Okay? Didn't think anything of it. 
But if the Jets win the AFC East, then I have to wear this on the air. Do you understand that not only is this a female shirt, but it's small. It's little. Can you imagine how stupid that's going to look? Just from, beside the, from the fact that it says the Jets on it. That's bad enough. But a women's shirt. Like, you couldn't even get a guy shirt. That, that is messed up, dude. Seriously. So... And Gord King for the win again. Since a $2 super chat says, do the Jets even sell men's gear? Maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's the pro maybe, maybe that's all they had. So that that's true. That's a good point. Um, but back to this game. The Jets have changed their quarterback. So as you guys, a lot of you might might know that Zach Wilson. Um, did re something really stupid in the post game after the the, the uh, Patriots game. We didn't get to talk about this because I didn't have a Tuesday show. Uh, I didn't have a reaction show. So let's just go back in time real quick. Uh, after that horrible news fest of a game uh, with nothing but punting until the very end when the Patriots uh, had a, a run back for the win. But up until that point, Zach Wilson was garbage, by the way, the, the, the whole time. But what really made it bad, what really kind of, I think, did him in, is that in the post-game press conference, he was asked if he let, if he felt felt like he let the defense down, which obviously he did. The defense held the Patriots to three points the whole game. He goes, no, like had no, no emotion about it, like nothing, no, just like a total. You know, punk, spoiled punk, right? And now he's been benched. And he's not even the backup anymore, okay? He's the third guy. He's the, he's the, the practice squad dude, the scout team guy. So now it's this new dude, and then Joe Flacco is now the backup. I believe Joe Flacco is the backup now. But, yeah, Zach Wilson completely screwed himself over. So I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know. So it's going to be hard to pick this. With the Bears. The Bears sometimes can play a pretty good game and just find ways to lose. But I don't know about the Jets quarterback. But the thing is, is I don't think that this guy, um, and you know what? His name escapes me. Uh, is it White? I think his name's White. Something Mike, Matt White, Mike White or something. White. The White quarterback. Let's call him that. The White quarterback. So... He can't be worse than Zach Wilson, right? Right? Like, that's not possible. Now, I asked this question about Todd Bowles. I said, Todd Bowles cannot be a worse coach than Bruce Arians, right? Well, okay. So, it can always get worse. But I just don't think so. I'm going with the Jets here to go 7-4. and four. I think they're going to bounce back from that horrible game last week. Remember, a lot of the reason why that, that game was so difficult for both the teams, division, game. You know each other. That's just, that's just how it is. Uh, Bengals at Titans. Bengals a bit disappointing. They're kind of having their uh, Super Bowl hangover a little bit. Not too bad, though. They're 6-4, and four, so that's not, it's not completely like um, annihilation or anything. It's not completely... Um, them just getting you know, crapped on everywhere they go. They're still playing some decent football now. Uh, but they've got the Titans. And I think the Titans are a really good team. And they showed that, of course, uh, as of recently. So I, I think Tennessee's got this one. It's going to be a game in Tennessee. It's going to be a game that the Bengals are not going to want to play. And the Titans are gritty. They're tough. They they take on the role of their head coach, which is Mike Grable. They it's, it's like when you watch the Titans play, you see Mike Vrabel. You see his big, fat head on the side of their helmet. It should be called the Tennessee Vrabels because they play and they act just like him. And they're, they're a tough team, and they're a team that people don't want to see in the playoffs if they really get hot. So those types of teams are the ones that can play hardcore outdoor football, you know, if it's in their element. Those are the kind of teams you don't want to run into. Uh, I like the Titans for this one. Falcons at the DC Lizard people. Uh, don't care. Could not care less about this. 
wow, just blah. But the DC Lizard people are going to take it. Okay. Chargers at Cardinals. The Cardinals are who we thought they were. They are who we thought they were. We played them in preseason, you know? Who, who, we played them three quarters. Who says preseason's bullshit? Bullshit. No, they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. Well, the Cardinals are who we thought they were. They suck. They suck. And you know why they suck? Because they, they hired a crappy coach and got a guy who should not be playing NFL quarterback, in my opinion. That might be a little harsh, but whatever. Fine. You know what? I'm allowed a hot take here and there. Everyone else gets to do it every day. I do it a few times. Sorry, Milena. I know you love football, baby. And he's little, and he's like a little baby. And he runs like a toddler, like a five-year-old toddler who poo-pooed in his diaper. And, you know, he runs around the field like that, right? But the Cardinals are just not any good, and they're going to get their ass whipped by the Chargers. So, and of course, Roger, uh, the Chargers coming off a tough loss against Kansas City last Sunday night. Uh, Raiders at Seahawks. The Raiders. The Raiders. Z, Sean, Ha, Son. What the hell, man? What the hell? What's the deal with your Raiders? Are they ever going to do anything? Are they ever going? I mean, pretty good offseason. Pretty good offseason. And Derek Carr is not a bad quarterback. You know? You guys just can't seem to get it right. And it's very, very annoying. It, you know, when growing up, the Raiders are supposed to be good. They're supposed to be tough and badasses. And you saw the Raiders you're like, uh oh, it's the Raiders. Shit. But man, they've been the laughing stock for the last what since they got blown out by the Bucks, basically in two thousand two. The Seahawks got this. The Raiders are going to get their butts kicked. All right. Sunday, we have Rams and Chiefs. Who remembers this game? This game, a few years back, one of the highest scoring games in NFL history, there was absolutely zero defense. Like, nobody could stop anybody. It was absolutely pathetic. I think it was 2018. 2018, if I'm not mistaken. The Rams, we're going to talk about suspicions. The Rams are something you want to investigate, okay? Something you might want to look at. Uh, boy, do they suck. Boy, do they suck. If the Chiefs don't blow them out, that's, that would be utterly shocking. Okay. So clearly I've got Kansas City. Saints at 49ers. 49ers are 6 and 4. 49 their record may say 6 and 4. No. They're a 9 and 1 team right now. Okay? They right now they are a 9 and 1 team. Like they play like that. They them and I think the Vikings are two of the best teams in the NFL and I I I think their their record is deceiving. I would like to see the Bucks come kind of come up and and but they've got to prove it more, okay? Barely beating the crappy Rams and then beating Seattle in Europe uh, is is good, but we need to see more consistency. We need to see them come out and just have a complete game. Uh, so I can't put Tampa Bay right right at the number one right now. They're just not playing cohesive enough. But they could if they just got their stuff together. They've certainly got the the, the players, they've certainly got the talent to do it. They just got to put it together. And I just want to see a little more from them. And maybe we'll see that against Cleveland on Sunday. Uh, so I've got the 49ers here. The Saints are the Saints. I don't know what the hell they're doing. Uh, all this talk about Sean Payton coming back. And it was like, where's Sean Payton going to go? Where's Sean Payton going to go? Sean Payton, why not come back to the Saints? Why just not? I mean, they've got his contract for years. Instead of all that crap, you know, just... Just take him back, and if he wants, if he wants Tom Brady to be his his quarterback, well, bring in Tom. Saints got weapons there. 
there it's you know and you got a good head coach and if you got a good head coach you can you don't have to have as many weapons right so it was kind of like the balance and Brady won a Super Bowl he had a lot of weapons but they had a garbage coach and Bruce Arians you got a, a coach like Sean Payton then you can have you don't have to have as many and you got Tom Brady there and boom you, you got something there so why not the Saints everyone's saying all these other teams except for the Saints why not so but this year it's it's just it's it's over for them uh Packers at Eagles okay I can't stress this enough this is a playoff game. This is a playoff game for the Green Bay Packers. Okay? So tomorrow night, at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the Packers, on NBC, Sunday Night Football. I've been waiting all day for Sunday night. That... That's a playoff game tomorrow night. So we're getting our first real solid playoff game. The Packers have to win. If they don't win, it's done. It's finished. They might be done anyway. Okay? But if they don't win tomorrow night, it's over. So basically every Green Bay game from here on out, as long as they keep winning, is a playoff game for Green Bay. That's what you're seeing. The Eagles, they shouldn't mail it in, but they, they could have an off night. And it they still... You know, they've got the Cowboys, you know, gaining on them. But still, it's, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But Green Bay, it's over for them if they don't, if they don't do this. So that's going to be interesting to see how Green Bay plays. Now, Aaron Rodgers has got a new target at tight end Watson. This guy, um, this guy's got something there. So it should be an interesting game to watch. I'm looking forward to that one. Okay, Monday night, Steelers uh, at Colts. Again, Colts situation brings in Jeff Saturday as the head coach. The best coaching move Jeff Saturday in his youthful, young, two-week career as a head coach, the best decision he made was a decision that not even a regular head coach could make, which was something as simple as saying Matt Ryan's the quarterback. Let's just put him back. Put him back. You know, you did that. Now there's hope. It's, it's slim. It's a little. It's not. It's not great. But you did the right thing. Uh, Steelers is Tom. Tom uh, Mike Tomlin's flirting with his first uh, losing season here, unless they go on a run, which I don't see. Um, but I like Indy for this at home on Monday night. Okay. So that takes us to the Buccaneers at the Browns. Random question. Who do you guys and gals think has the best stadium in the league? Well, it depends on what you like in, in, you know, in a stadium. It, it, it's, uh, do you prefer outside? Do you prefer the indoors? It's, um, I've been to Gillette Stadium, and I'm telling you, that is, that is an experience. It's its own little city. You know, just the stadium itself, all these shops and everything. It's just so cool. And the way it's designed and all that. And, and of course, there's a, a special thing about that for me. But um, I guess I couldn't answer that unless I've been to that stadium. Honestly, back in 2000, uh, let's see, 2006. Yeah, 2006 when the Cardinals Stadium opened and the... the that was badass. That thing looks like a spaceship. Um, and it was really cool when that first opened up. So they got a good one. Uh, I've been to SoFi uh, here in LA, and it's really nice. <laughs> Very nice, actually. I mean, they, they put a lot of money into that thing. Um, I've been to Texas Stadium. Okay, I'm not going to go through every stadium. I've been to a lot. I would say overall, the coolest or best stadium right now is probably SoFi. I think that one is just very really impressive. I've never been to the one in Las Vegas, although I've heard I've heard it looks uh it's pretty cool, but honestly from the outside it looks like a toilet to me or a trash can or something. And that might be appropriate considering how the Raiders play. So maybe that was on purpose, 
If you want to look up a conspiracy, check that one out. So, the stadium is meant to look like the way they play on the field. But I heard it was actually pretty cool looking once you kind of walk up on it. So, all right. Oh, for Gord King, if we're talking about home field advantage and how the the environment and everything helps you, uh, there's there, there's just a few. There's uh, Gillette in New England, of course. There's Arrowhead, like you said. Of course, Arrowhead, absolutely. Uh, there's Seattle. Uh, the way that that stadium was built to keep in crowd noise, the way they designed it, even though it's outdoors, it's very interesting if you look at the architecture of that. Look it up sometime and, and how they how they did that. And uh, there's a great write up by this architect who talked about how the Seahawks Stadium was was designed and how clever it is. But that's definitely a uh, an advantage there. So, and also Dallas, uh, the stadium in Dallas is really cool looking. But I don't know if it matters for the advantage. It doesn't have the same mystique as as a lot of these other Lambeau Field. Probably one of the hardest places to win in, just because it's Lambeau. You know. Like, it's got that mystique to it. It's got that thing about it. And, and of course, that only matters if they're good. If, if they're garbage, then it don't matter. But if they're a good Green Bay team, you don't want to go into Lambeau. That's very difficult. Unless you're Eli Manning or Tom Brady. Okay? So, other than that, good luck. Okay, so, Buccaneers at Browns. This, this is a, a perfect time for the Buccaneers to come off the bye week and show that, look, we're a new team. Or we're we're not that crappy team that was didn't give didn't give a crap that we were around, didn't care, you know about what we were doing and make, dropping passes, running the wrong route, missing tackles, all these things, okay. All that can be made up for if you just now go on a run, and if you can't show, sorry, Addy, close your ears. If you can't show that you can't beat the Browns, and I'm not just talking about winning. I'm talking about them playing a good game. And it doesn't mean the Cleveland Browns can't play a good game, and it doesn't mean the Cleveland Browns won't score or do something cool here and there. That's not what I mean. The score is irrelevant as far as that goes. What I'm talking about is effort, excitement, wanting to be there, not doing stupid self-inflicted procedural penalties that will kill you every single time. They can go out and put a good game together. This Cleveland Browns team, this is the perfect time to do it, okay? So it's in Cleveland. Don't, don't assume anything. Don't assume that this is going to be a walkover. They've got to put a good game here together. We saw what happened when they went to Pittsburgh, right? So, yeah, nothing's a given here. Have I been to Fenway Park? No, I haven't, but... I, I'm, I'm very aware of how legendary Fenway Park is and the Green Monster and all that. Absolutely. That's like going to Yankee Stadium and, you know, uh, Wrigley Field and stuff like that. Yeah. I bet that's, I bet that's a great experience. But no, I've never been. I would like to, though. That would be really cool. But yeah, so the Buccaneers, I, I, I think they're going to be able to win this game. Let's, let's just be honest here. Um, they're the far superior team than Cleveland right now. Again, nothing, nothing's, nothing's promised, especially in the AFC-NFC matchup where teams are not familiar with each other. And Tampa's a, a, a southern team. They're going into Cleveland. I didn't even check the weather forecast. Don't know what that's going to be like, but still. Not that that will, should have a factor on them because, I mean, they went into Lambeau and took care of business. That wasn't, didn't seem to matter to them. But just don't take anything for granted. But I think they've got it covered. So, Israel. Uh, speaking of Israel, I was talking about Israel earlier, the, the big Cowboys fan. Uh, he sends a $2 super chat and says, how's it going, dude? How was your Thanksgiving? My Thanksgiving was phenomenal, okay? So, Milena's mom is here, and she cooked for all of us. You know, Brad, Roman, Z, everybody came over. 
We had Thanksgiving. We watched some football, had some good discussions. Great. The, the only ding, the only bad part is that Melania is not feeling well, but she's feeling better now. But she was kind of under the weather last night. Um, and that's why she's not on the show tonight. So, um, but she said she will be back next week. Definitely. But uh, other than that, I, I would say Thanksgiving went pretty, pretty damn good. You know, so thank you for asking. How about you? Bill Murray wants to go to a Patriots game at Lambeau. You could have done that a few weeks ago. Won't happen again for four years. And, well, actually, it could be longer than that because there's no guarantee that it would be in Green Bay. I'd have to check the rotation of the schedule and see. But, yeah, it may be a long time before you see that again. Elf of Courage! What is up? I'm really, really appreciative of all you guys being here uh, on Thanksgiving weekend. So I just want to tell you thank you. And uh, I just want to repeat, tomorrow uh, we'll be doing the quarterback uh, contest. If you've, if you've not signed up by tonight, um, I won't be able to add you to the tournament. So make sure you've decided that, you know, and the link is in the comments. It's uh, pinned all the way to the top. But we'll be doing that special show tomorrow for the members. So it's going to be fun. I can't wait for that, actually. All right. Speaking of that, um, I think I covered everything, right? So Sharon Tate lover says it will be eight years, actually. So that is the rotation. Okay. Wow. That's a long time. Now, with the 17-game schedule, there could be um, some contingencies there that could, could happen. Or, But I'm not sure, so I'm not going to commit to that. But there, there could be something weird that maybe, maybe, maybe could happen. But I know on the old rotation, before the stupid 17-game schedule that screwed everything up, before that... Uh, the rotation would have been four years. So, but there may be, there may be, you know, details there uh, regarding that 17th game that kind of changes things. So I don't, I don't know. I'd have to look into it. I just really don't like the 17 game schedule. It bugs me. Uh, they took away a preseason game and that is stupid. The preseason is not for us. It's not meant to be good football. It's not meant to be spectator football. It is the, the, the coach and staff trying to figure out who their best guys are. It's for, for not the starters. They already know who their main dudes are. But, and some, some, some guys win starting jobs. But it's really to fill the team out and know what you're doing. And you work on stuff. You work on plays and, and different schemes. And maybe you got a guy that's coming in that's new to the playbook or new to the offense or defense or whatever. That's your time to work on those things. And they took that away. They took that away, and then they're claiming, you know, preseason boring. Well, it's it was never meant for us. And one one stupid thing I thought was was dumb is that they would charge fans so much for a preseason game, and I I thought that was ridiculous, you know. So, in fact, preseason games should be just like first come first serve kind of thing, and that will give people who maybe can't afford the expensive tickets during the season, and they get to go. And, uh, and and watch a preseason games stuff like that, but yeah, that that was a bad decision on the NFL's part. Sixteen game schedule was perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. Leave it alone. And now it's it's causing a problem there. So, Biden, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that's my best pronunciation of what you wrote there. Uh, super chat, since the $2 super chat and says, going to the Raiders versus Seahawks game, going to be lit. Awesome. That is awesome. And you're going to watch the Seahawks dominate.
That is very cool. Take some pictures if you want, send them. I'll post them here for you. Before I go, before I go, there's something interesting I want to show you guys. Let me let me grab it. I almost forgot. And Elf of Courage, I'll get your super chat real quick here. Just a second. All right. So my brother Jason, you guys know, probably familiar with him. He comes on the show sometimes talking about injuries and stuff because he's a personal trainer and knows a lot about that stuff. Um, and I'm sure, you, and you've also probably seen him uh, as Dwayne, uh, the the redneck uh, on Halloween. He did that last Hall or Halloween before last. But we were talking, just having a football conversation between two brothers, just shooting the shit. But he said something that I just thought was so awesome. So. Uh, here is his his uh, his comment to me. He said, I'm serious when I say this. If I were being held with an executioner and an axe to my head and my life depended on one game that pitted Tom Brady to play four quarters against a team with a combination of machines, uh, machines, <laughs> that, that's a typo, obviously, Mahomes, Burrow, Cousins, Jackson, fill in the blank, whatever, all playing together to switch out at any time they want, kind of like the Pro Bowl. I would bet my life on Tom Brady. I'm dead serious. I, I responded to him. I said, can I post this on the show? This is, this is good. So I just, and he's not, he's not a Patriots fan or anything like that. He's just kind of a neutral observer, you know? And he just sent that to me out of nowhere because he had been watching uh, Brady, you know, quite a bit lately. And, and I just thought that was really awesome. Uh, so well said, you know. Elf of Courage sends a $5 super chat and says, after losing to the Vikings, is there still a way the Pats can win three games to finish above 500? Uh, of course. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's just going to be a tough road. It's not going to be, it's not going to be simple. And like I said, not, people think that, um, Every game is uh, dip, or some games are easy or easy schedule, blah blah blah. No, I mean, how many times? You know, it just depends on the type of game and and stuff like that. I would have to look at the schedule to give you more of a, a complete uh, answer to that. But absolutely, yeah. So, Israel asked me, "What do I?" Uh, what do I think of Dallas's rebound against Minnesota and New York this week? And uh, it's funny, Israel. I was talking about this earlier. Uh, I, th I thought you were here when when I was saying this stuff. But uh, I'll, I'll repeat. Um, I'm blown away. I'm just really impressed by them, and they're just playing really good football right now. And that 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 win against the Vi uh, the Vikings in Minnesota was one of the most impressive things Dallas has done in a very long time. That. Was just, because you know why the Vikings are good. The Vikings are really good, and so that was that was eye opening. And now they just dealt a blow to the Giants. Giants are not as good as the Vikings. Obviously, the Giants are the weaker team. In fact, I might go as far to say that the DC Lizard people are probably on par with the Giants. Uh, they're probably the same. I'm not. I'm not one of these people that say, "Oh, the record is what they say they are." I know Bill Parcells used to say that. Well. No, that's not accurate, really. Okay, look at the 49ers, for example. It's just there are certain reasons why certain teams have a, a record at different points in the season. 
the Giants are not. I'm not sold on them being so good. So, but but Dallas, that's a solid win anyway. Okay, and it's a division win. You got to win those games because that's when tiebreakers come in, and you want you want to, the victory over those guys. So, absolutely, man, I'm happy for your team. And remember what I told you. I told I told uh, um, Kevin Godnet this earlier. Enjoy the ride. Don't be pessimistic. Don't be down on yourself and say, oh, the Dallas Cowboys are just going to get my hopes up and then they're going to suck in the playoffs. Well, you know what? What if they win the Super Bowl and then you're going to wish that you enjoyed this regular season ride, okay? If they let you down, they let you down. So what? I mean, it's just, okay. I mean, it sucks, but it's part of it. It's why we watch, right? It's why we watch. So uh, it's why we love it. it it's it's the, the ups and downs and if your team just went undefeated every year, after a while, it'd start to get kind of boring. And you're like, uh, okay, so. But I know in your case, it's they haven't won in a long time, and it's probably frustrating. And I think, I'm not sure exactly your age, but I don't think you've ever seen a Cowboys Super Bowl victory, have you? So, um, yeah. But just yeah, enjoy it. So. I am getting tired. Okay. It's uh, Elva Courage is a five dollar super chat and says, "Lastly, Von Allen should write a thank you letter to Marcus Jones for saving him from having to wear a Jets shirt." <laughs> well, that wasn't uh, that wasn't the bet though. The bet was Jets win the AFC East. So, yeah, so, um, but there may, may be a chance that I still have to wear that. You, you just never know, okay? The AFC East is very weird division right now, and you, it's just, we'll see, we'll see, so... Thank you guys for being on tonight. Um, I really appreciate it. This has been fun night, very unique. And again, thank you to Bitcoin Motors for uh, moderating. And it was, he, he prepared for that and obviously prepared for it. And he had questions ready and stuff. Um, I thought he did awesome. Uh, thank you to Pat Truth, Truthner to, uh, to come on and... Uh, come into our environment, you know, and, and then uh, state his uh, uh, his view on things. Um, and tomorrow, uh, like I said, tomorrow we'll have the the drawing for the names and everything into the uh, and into the tournament. And that will be for members only. So if you want to be a part of that, make sure you become a member uh, tonight if you want a chance to win the Xbox. And we do have a runner up prize, but me and Millie have not really decided on what that's going to be yet. So uh, join, if you want to join, you can uh, click the link. It's pinned at the top of the comments there. And I'm also going to post it in the description of this video as soon as I get off the air here, okay? So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And um, enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving uh, vacation. Uh, you guys are awesome, okay? So with that, have a good night, guys. Hi, this is tennis player Mariana Dragic, and you're watching Fun Allen Sports, real and honest sports analysis. Subscribe now and join the empire. Fun Allen Sports, let's go. Fun Allen Sports.